Yeah. These dogs have a great time with this. Board members, please make sure your microphones are on. The green light's on. Thank you, Barbara. Make it's sure on. you give uh, Ethan a signal. Pardon? You give me make sure you give Ethan a signal. I'm in one of those winds tonight. I'm tired. <laughs> okay. I'm hurting. <laughs> I call to order the workshop for Bullhead City School Board on Thursday, March 14, 2024 at 5.30 p.m. Roll call. Melinda Sabraski here. Charlene Diaz here. Fred Rushton here. Barb Zarzicki here. Sheila Burnett here. Well, we are all here. Physically. There were, there were like I want to say a million, but there really weren't a million. Board, <laughs> board cha or policy changes, did anybody have any questions on them? When I read no. through them, they all kind of made sense mm -hmm. to me. Did anybody have any questions? No. Mm -hmm. Okay, so can, I, we, this, that's just information. Um, I think the only one I saw was, was the high school one that said, Basically, and we don't have anything to do with high school, so. Yeah, so it didn't matter. Yeah, no. Um, item 1.4, district spending analysis. This is, this was sent to us by, I believe it was AD, no, you forwarded it. I forwarded it, it, yeah, it to you, forwarded yeah, it to, I did. But came from ADE, right? Uh, no, it no, came Journey from General. the Auditor General's okay. Office. Okay, all right. Uh, oh, that won't work for this, will it? Mm -hmm. So, yeah, so you asked to have this on and for us to have a little time to talk about it. Yes. Okay, so one of, the, one of the things that I want to say to you uh, is we had long conversations off and on uh, when, when the Auditor General's office was seeking information from us to complete this report. And uh, uh, because they were asking for salaries and those kinds of things. Uh, it seems pretty obvious that this time they changed the way they calculate the <laughs> formula for instruction in the classrooms, and that was part of the conversation we had with them. Since I came into this position, uh, I calculate the salaries, the actual salaries for instruction as teachers' contract amount plus whatever it is that they, uh, that they get from classroom site fund, a.k.a. Prop 301, because everyone gets those. Um, in the past, the Auditor General's office seems to have included in their calculations um, uh, some of the supplemental pay. So if some people go to professional development for which we pay salaries, but other people don't, it seems that in the past they've included some of that, and so that has elevated the average salary but not everybody attends that. To me, it, it needs to be you know, uh, something that everybody's eligible for. The other thing that seems apparent this year, um, it was optional this year that uh, we use the new coding um, that uh, the Auditor General's office has uh, created. It will be required for next year. The optional is um, that they only consider in teacher salaries teachers, not librarians, not the instructional coaches, not, the, uh, not anybody who is not a classroom teacher. Okay. Okay. And, um, and so uh, in our calculations, we've used anybody who is in the code book at the current time, 6112, which includes librarians and coaches and uh, uh, counselors and whatever uh, support people who really do provide services directly to students but with the new numbers that is restricted now only to teachers classroom teachers so that would reduce the number of folks who would be used in these calculations so I I believe that that's part of the reason that this looks like such a drop in spending for uh, for instruction uh, but the section then that is student support is a little bigger than it's been. And then some folks that they obviously consider as administration, uh, I'm not sure who, but some people that they consider as administration that we don't, uh, because clearly we have not increased the number of administrators we have in our district. So um, uh, I think next year we'll have a little better idea of how 
to compare the, the spending uh, splits uh, when they use the same formula next year as they're using this year. So I think part of it is a different use of the formulas this year. But <coughs> every school district in the state used the same basic formula that we did, right? Not in the past, I don't think. No, for this. Report. Oh, for this, yes. They're using okay. all the same so, thing, but so that doesn't mean that those districts weren't also using different different things like I, I mean a different definition what they what they've gone to here is is really closer to what I've considered um, uh, in some ways closer to what I've considered um, uh, the you know the investment in classrooms uh, because they've because they've dropped out now all of those supplemental things in their formula they've dropped out the P, the extra PDs and the extra duties and the, those things the, but the other part they dropped out was other folks that I have considered to be anybody who's been 6112 uh, in the code uh, to be an educator. In the changes of the code, all of those people will no longer be 6112. So they've already taken those folks out. But yes, they are using the same one for all school districts. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking, though, that each school district had its own way of figuring out, you know, on their own what they posted on their website or whatever they did. So, well, there's nothing um, in here that says that that's, that happened. So, well, I'm basing that on I'm basing my comment on the conversations that I had with them when they were asking us about this, and they kept saying, "No, we want you to send us this." No, we want you to send us this. And so I ended, you know, I sent them what they wanted. So based on the conversations that I had, um, uh, both email conversations and on the phone conversations, um, it was clear that they were using the new optional numbers this year. So, and that doesn't mean that we might not be spending less this year in instruction, although I don't think so. On the other hand, think about how many people we have paid salaries from uh, from ESSER three and from uh, you know those things. So I'm not sure how those factor in because they also ask us to separate those out. So basically, what they were asking are just the people who were in the classroom. Mm -hmm. right? Okay, so they asked that from for, for everybody, everybody in mm -hmm. the state. Mm -hmm. So go down to Cass scroll down, down Cassie, to where it says where it says um, next one, right there, right right here. Right here. Yeah. Fiscal year 21 was before any of the ESSER, okay? Okay. And, uh, uh, and so, you know, we had some differences. I mean, we had some differences in staffing and whatever. Um, but yeah, it looks like a huge drop. It looks like a huge change mm -hmm. because that was the biggest year and this current one is the smallest year. Um, I'm sure also the other thing that changed is some of the percentages. Our fixed costs have gone up over those six years. We all know about inflation and those kinds of things. So uh, whatever, I'm not trying to defend it. I'm just trying to, I'm trying to get a handle, and I've been for since this came out, trying to get a handle on how it could be so different um, uh, than, uh, for instance, when you look at uh, farther down where it shows the five-year how it could be yeah, so could different in, in just the last year. Wait, wait, no, wait, no, no, wait, no, wait, stop wait. right there. I stop right here. Yeah. So how, the, uh, how instruction could drop 6.7%, the, the only thing that I can see there, because our people have had raises every year that I've been here, um, uh, is uh, the only thing I can think of is is excluding the people during those five years that we paid out of grants that we did not pay out of grants in the past so we've paid for title one people for years that hasn't changed but we had at one point we had uh, 13 14 teacher positions paid out of ESSER uh, and and we're now uh, down to five this year um, so I, I don't know. I, I don't know. It has to do with the way they calculate. So Go on down farther, a little bit farther, Cassie, down to where they, they're comparing the, keep going, keep going, keep going. Wait a minute, wait a minute, let me see what this is. Spending per student? Yeah. Okay. 
our peer average is fifteen thousand dollars, right? Fifteen hundred. Fifteen hundred dollars. Excuse me. I'm sorry. <laughs> for administration, it would be different. That would yeah, be for administration. Okay. So we're below that. We're above the state average, but we're below that. So they consider that comparable. Okay. So keep going down. Well, and it, before you go too far, okay, Cass, sorry. First of all, well, point out uh, first of all the spending per square foot uh, for the district, and uh, remember these data are for last year. They're not for the current year, okay? Um, uh, so that was essentially what we were spending, I think. Isn't that right? Go back up, Cassie, let me see to be sure. Yeah, fiscal year 23, okay. So if you'll go back down to that. So if you remember, we had uh, ABM through October. Um, uh, I guarantee you that amount's going to go up for the for the current fiscal year because we are fixing things like crazy. Um, so I think that will go up. Um, you can see our square footage per student is right dead on the you know yeah, the state thing. Um, I I don't know why our uh, food service spending for, per meal is so high. Um, that's one of the things I want to investigate because that is pretty high. Uh, transportation. Transportation. I understand that. Yeah, going okay. down now. Whatever. Keep, uh, yeah, wants. keep going down. All right. So yeah, right that here. one's that's the right one here. that makes mm -hmm. me crazy. Yeah, they took out the coaches. They took out some of our people who are our highest paid, what we considered teachers. Well, I the find it real interesting that they took out librarians or um, yes, um, you know what I'm talking about, the yeah, specialist teachers. So librarians, art, Well, they music. didn't take, no, they didn't take out art and music. They and just took out librarians? Yes, because librarians are coded, it, yeah, if they are classroom. coded as a librarian, they're coded as 2200. But they're still teaching. Of course they are. Our, our librarians are. Now yeah. we know that there are places yeah. where librarians are. Librarians and, you know, classes come in and out of there. Mm -hmm. um, uh, so to me, they, yeah, they're absolutely teachers. Um, to but me, the every, coaches are teachers but too. But again, everybody in the state had their librarians taken out. Everybody in the state had their instructional coaches taken out. So this leaves, this is the residual after all that stuff is removed from every district mm -hmm. in, the, right. in the state. So we are $10,504 below the state average, average in the state. And we've been below the average in the state for a long time, but not by and that we much. we wonder why we don't keep and yes, retain teachers. exactly. So basically, we need to look for $10,000 per teacher. <laughs> If we think that $10,000 per teacher is going to get us the results that we need. As I've said, our teachers have had raises every year for the last five years, okay? And has the quality of our work improved? I, that's a rhetorical question, but it's one of the reasons, you know, my, my thing is obviously not. Our assessment data indicates that we're not getting what we want. And if we want to get what we want or what we need for our kids, we can't keep doing the same old things that we've been doing. Okay, now so, we switch we switched up the subject. Yes, we have, and, I, and I'll go back to this. Okay. But salaries alone are not going to do it. Will they help? Yeah, would help us re recruit Ten. some folks, yeah. And we okay. can't compete for salaries, part of that, that 52,000 for the average, includes those districts downstate that are property rich and have overrides, like Mojave Valley had. But Mojave Valley doesn't have an override anymore. They don't, but they have been continuing some of those salaries and gearing them back slowly, okay? But it's why they got people when they had, that's why they recruited, I mean, that's why they didn't recruit, so don't get me wrong, they did not recruit our teachers. But at the time they passed that override to begin with, they got a bunch of our teachers, mm -hmm. okay? And those property rich districts, wherever in the state, the overrides are almost always for salaries. And if they lost those overrides, 
they would be in the same boat that Mojave Valley's been in since they lost the vote for their override, is that they would have to fall back. It's unlikely to happen in those property-rich districts, um, you know, even, even though it goes to a vote, but it's unlikely to happen in those districts. That's one of the things that, remember I shared those data with you last year that showed the differences between the districts that have uh, yeah. the overrides and the ones that don't. Um, so, uh, you know, but yeah, you're right. Salaries are a factor. That's why we've worked hard every year to make sure that we had raises. And in fact, when we talk about the, in the agenda tonight, when we talk about the, the uh, salary schedules that I'm proposing to you, you will see big increases in base pay for those folks that now cannot be coded as teachers that we've coded as teachers in the past. Because the only way we will keep those people is if we can offset part of what they will lose because they will not get classroom site fund. Because only people who are coded at 1,000, 6112, will get the classroom site fund. Oh my God. Only those people. So they won't get site funds? No. Nope. And that's not right? No, it isn't right. To me, it's not right. The counselors, the, the instructional coaches, um, uh, we, can, we can figure out the librarian thing because the thing is our librarians teach. Yeah. Okay, they teach every single day, mm -hmm. all day, mm -hmm. all right? So we can, we can code them, we can, we can leave the, we can, co we can code them 1,000, okay? We can fix that, we can code them at six, because they're already coded at 6112. We can code them as 1,000 because to me they're teachers first. Mm -hmm. Do the, and librarian seconds. do the instructional coaches have the ability to go back into the classroom to pick up, that up? Well, if we put them in classrooms to teach, but then we have no coaches. Well, and we'll that's get, critical. We'll get, we'll get to that because what I've been seeing uh, over the last three cycles of, of testing is that somebody's not doing their job. Well, they are this year, and I will tell you they are this year. They are being coached, and they are coaching. They are not doing things that they have done for the past several years. Uh, and one of the things, actually one of the things, Melinda, that we could do that would help them, because several years ago, I don't even know, but it was when I was retired, um, uh, the district chose to have the instructional coaches also be the Title I teacher at each site. And they supervise the paras in those positions. That's right. Okay, that's a big P. We used to have separate Title I teachers. So essentially they took a job and they piled it on top of another job and said, guess what, you get to do two jobs for the same pay. Mm -hmm. But if they did that now, they would get the site, the site funds, right? But they couldn't coach. And it's critical. The research is very, very clear. Any of us can go to a workshop does or a the professional. Does research apply to Bullhead City? Yes, okay, it does. I need to Absolutely. See the because obviously, obviously, I'm having some very, very serious problems. I can this. go back and pull the data for you from the four, five years of reading first, and the difference it made having people who actually go into classrooms and follow up with teachers once they've learned something. There's very heavy research every place that you can go to a workshop, I can go to a workshop, I can make notes, I can go back and have the best intentions. I could try something. If it doesn't work, I give it up. But if I have somebody come in and observing me trying to do those things and coaching me and supporting me in that role, the difference in, in implementation of what I learned in that workshop changes from 5% to 85%. I just need to see that data. So okay, I'm just, I'm just, I will try to find it. I, you know, yeah. I, I'm not seeing anything. Question but I Melinda, have. we are less than a year. We are eight months into systemic change, and that's what we're going to talk about next: is systemic change and I the understand difference. Systemic change. Okay. Okay, I understand that. But if the coaches are now doing exactly what they're supposed to be doing, mm -hmm. then we should be seeing some kind of movement 
You won't right away. It doesn't happen immediately. It won't we happen. see changes in behaviors. We don't necessarily see changes in outcomes for three to five years. That's systemic change. And if we're doing it quickly, we'll be really happy to see systemic, we'll, to, to see dramatic outcome changes next year. Next year, not this year. My, my question is, how many hours a week are those coaches in classrooms? Right now? Yes. Way more than they used to be when they were doing Title I and doing other things that they had no business having assigned to them. Are they in a classroom continually all day long? I'm going to say 80% of the time. Is that reasonable, Jen? I mean, they're meeting with teachers, so they're not just observing. Right. And part of what we found, Barb, is that our folks, somewhere along the line in the last, um, in the last 10 years, in the last 10 years, lost sight of the state standards. They lost sight that the state standards are the curriculum. Textbooks and all those other things are resources that we use to teach the curriculum. And they've lost sight of that. So in about September or so, we realized that they didn't have a clue what they're, they weren't even looking at their standards. So we changed the PLCs, which are the planning and, uh, you know, the professional learning team meetings, where they have to sit there and look at the standards and design their lesson plans as a team for, the, for two weeks from now based on those standards. They have to. And right now they're doing it for language arts and math not so much for science and social studies that would be a too heavy a lift right now to be doing that um, and and so it means some real big changes in what they're teaching and and how they're teaching besides how they're teaching it um, uh, because they weren't doing that and we recognize that because of the outside eyes looking at what we were doing so yes they are coaching coaching is not just being in the classroom watching what they're doing it's giving feedback it's, it's modeling for teachers what they need to be doing. It is sitting in on those meetings and, and listening and making sure that they are addressing the standards and staying on task and doing what they need to do relative to instruction and less conversation about um, um, so-and-so's behavior and whatever else used to be. And in fact, it's proved valuable enough to our teachers because we require it one time a month, I mean one time a week, one of their prep times a week, that virtually every team, virtually every team is now on their own meeting the second time each week, the second prep time, because they recognize that they need to and that they, and that they need to do that to improve. So in other words, for several years now, we've been doing it as service to our students. I think that's safe to say. And I think the other thing that's important with that, Barb, is what IE is saying to these people, and, and please understand, and I'm going to say this again, it's going to seem kind of out, of out of order here, but in terms of what we're talking about here, but it's really important. We do not employ a single teacher in our district, not one including our substitutes, our long-term substitutes, because I will tell you in some of our schools, the long-term substitutes are rocking it, mm -hmm. okay? We don't have a single employee in our district who is not capable of doing what we're asking them to start doing, okay? Not one, all right? I'm not questioning their intent in the past, but I will say to you that the direction we are going right now is based on the same message from IE that Jen and I have been saying for five years that we started saying when we came on board. Is that fair, Jen? Yeah. Sometimes you have to hear it from somebody else. That's the same in our classrooms too, you know. Uh, you got you three were teachers. You know you could you could be teaching something and it didn't seem to be working. And Barb could come into your classroom and and say exactly the same words, and kids would go, "Oh, I get it." That's the way it is with us sometimes when we're learning. 
Well, and I, I would add on to that is, is that, you know, any kind of change, people have a hard time with change. Yes. And you're not going to get 100% of the teachers on board first, first round. Nope. I mean, you're just not because nope. you're going to have resistors and you always will. And so you have to kind of focus on those people who are willing to try it and okay, let's do it. And maybe that's half the teaching staff, I don't know, or, or three fourths of the teaching staff. But then you, once you get the majority of the people working and, and doing what needs to be done, they start showing some results, then you'll start pulling in some of those resistors. Yes. Are you gonna pull in all of them? No, you're gonna have some that are gonna resist until they're you know, blue in the moon, whatever. But but until they go someplace else, or they go someplace else, or retire, or whatever they decide to do. Um, but I, you know, I think we have to we have to give it a chance. You know, historically, going back a few years, and is that Bullhead City School District has been notorious for trying a program working it for a couple years, not seeing the results they want, and then let's change everything. And then they do that again, and let's try it for a couple years, doesn't work, let's try something else. Okay, not Charlene, I'm gonna stop you right now. Okay, and the reason why is because we're off topic. Okay. 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 We are. We, we're, we're gonna talk about that a little <laughs> okay. bit later, so you just, you just <laughs> okay. keep that up. Um, I am very, very concerned. Okay. Okay. Um, I think we need to do something. Mm -hmm. I look the the you also published or gave us uh, a list of teachers and salaries. And those are current salaries mm -hmm. for this year. And there is one that you need to know. It looks very low, and it's simply because that person only came on about six weeks ago, and that's the salary for the remainder of the year. It's not the annual salary. Okay, and and that's that's okay. Sure. Um, but there are some salaries I do question. Okay. And this is this is not it's not appropriate to talk about. No, that. I understand. But there are some. So you and I probably need just to sit and talk. <laughs> maybe maybe that that will straighten me out. But the thing is, I am very concerned about this. Bullhead City is where I live. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We should be top of the pack at any time, or at least striving to be top of the pack. If there are only four school districts in Mojave County, or three that have comp comparable size to us. There, there is no other district that has comparable size okay. to us in, in Mojave County, but I understand what you're saying. The three cities. Yeah. Okay. We should be at the top of that. We should be at the top of Mojave County. Well, I want us to be at the top of Mojave County academically. Uh, yeah. But Absolutely. But we should be at, at every level. We should be at top. That is, that's why, that, that's my feeling about this. Okay. Please keep in mind that, well, that's a, mm. It's another topic? Well, no, it's going back to salary. So we'll talk about it when we get to salary. Okay. I'll explain it. part of that thing. So, do you want more on this thing? Sure. I mean, one. on this one? Uh, no. Okay. Cass, would you uh, get the other one up for me, please? Okay. Okay. Well, you kind of uh, you kind of uh, jumped in on my. This is where Charlene can jump in. <laughs> gotcha. I'm sorry, Charlene. No, no, it is. It's fine. Okay. It's fine. Okay. So the change process. Uh, just a definition, and this is not just for you. It's for anybody else out there. You know, the people in the public, and so they know what's going on. It's a planned, organized approach to managing the transition from the current state to a desired future state. And that's exactly what you're talking about, Melinda, is mm -hmm. our desired future state, okay? There are two main kinds of change. One is adaptive, and that's usually small incremental changes adopted to address organizational needs that evolve over time. So for example, uh, we have all kinds of forms we use in the district, uh, some of which you're very familiar with because we've brought revised versions of those forms to you. 
um, uh, there are procedures that change, some disciplinary procedures that change. There are things like that that change. Those are adaptive changes. Time happens, things happen, you make changes to accommodate that. Transformational change, on the other hand, is larger in scale and scope. And those changes uh, involve major shifts in mission, strategy, structure, performance, and processes. And I've highlighted, or I've put in italics, the three, the three of those that really are what we are addressing this year and started this year. Our mission has not changed. Our mission is student success for life. That's, you know, we have a mission statement that's more this lengthier than that, but that's really what it is. We want our students to be prepared to be successful in life. So the mission hasn't changed. But the strategies to get there, the performance of those of us who work with kids, and the processes of doing so are what we're focusing on uh, at this time. Please stop me anytime you want in this, okay? Because I don't really want to be lecturing. Adaptive change is a, a methodical approach within a system. So it's a piece of the system, okay? Uh, if we're talking about uh, the whole idea, the whole terminology for systemic and systematic change uh, started in medicine. So, you know, if I want to change, uh, uh, change the way my nose looks, I might go to a plastic surgeon. That's a, that's a systematic change. It's changing one thing. Transformational change uh, is a whole system approach to inherent, pervasive, ingrained, often subconscious biases and habits. So if I don't like my weight, I change a whole lot of things. I make a systemic change in my life to affect my whole body for health reasons, for appearance reasons, for whatever. Adaptive change is frequently both desired and annoying. At worst, it's annoying because we have to learn some new form or some new process. Transformational change, on the other hand, is always painful and eventually rewarding. It's painful. It's what Charlene said a minute ago. People don't like this kind of change. It's hard. It's painful. It means a lot of work. Losing weight usually means lots of work. Uh, you know, you, you don't do that overnight. So graphically, it looks like this. Now this is a, a kind of cartoon approach to some pretty heavy research that's been done, or was done probably 40 years ago, uh, about what happens. Um, you've got the old situation, which we've had for years in our district. And we've introduced a foreign element. We've introduced some serious change. And so at first there's resistance. And then there's some chaos. There's lots of stumbling around. Uh, there's, 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 oh, there's a transformational idea. There is a change, a syst systemic change. And we start working on it. We start climbing back up. We integrate that change. And eventually we get to a new status quo we get to that desired future. Right now, among our uh, teachers, administrators, and coaches, the blue arrow on the right, we have about 25 to 30% of our folks there. They're working on that, starting to get it and integrate it. We've been calling that the coalition of the willing because those are the people who from the very beginning said, I'm all in. And so they've been working on it. Um, uh, Charlene referred to those people as, you know, the ones who, I, I can't remember the term you used, but it's the, yeah. it means the same. We have, about, we have about a third or so in the transforming. They're starting to do the things. They're starting, they're going, oh, I can do that. And it's partly because they hear the ones who are starting to integrate the, the changes, hear them talking about what results they're getting, and they go, how did you do that? How did you do that? And then they're told that, you know, those teachers say, here's what I did. And they, oh, oh I could do that. And so they're moving in that direction. And then we have a few. Mm, 
maybe not a third, maybe a quarter of folks who, some of whom, many of whom have been around a long time and remember what Charlene was saying. Yeah, okay, here's another new idea and it'll only be here for a couple of years and we'll work really hard at this and then it'll go away. I need to know that it's gonna stay before I commit. So this is kind of where our folks are right now. And this is very typical of two thirds, three fourths of the way through the first year of change. It's very typical. This is how it looks to employees themselves. <laughs> okay. So can I cope with this? Uh, at long last, something's gonna change because there are folks who've been wanting it to change. What's it gonna do to me? Uh, we have some folks who are in denial. Those folks are, yep, I was here when, I was here when this started and I'll be here when it's gone. <laughs> um, and then all of the things in between. The red arrows, right now, those are the folks who are kind of resisting. That's why. Um, the green, we have folks who are going, ah, I'm beginning to see how this might work. And fortunately, a few people who are going, I'm gonna make this work if it kills me. Um, and then they'll be, back on the, they'll be back on track. And we have some folks who are already, this can work and be good. So I use the red and the blue and the green arrows on this one to show uh, where our folks are. For students, the change process is exactly the same. What they are learning to do is they are learning to own their own learning growth. The difference is that because they don't have so many ingrained habits or ingrained expectations, it happens faster for them. So you see I have the arrows all converged there because we have kids, we have, we have kids who started with the, like where the red arrow is and they're already over where the blue arrow is. Um, and, and we have kids and everywhere in between because the process of change is much less painful for, for younger people. You know, they don't have all the habits. And that's a good thing that we're seeing. Okay, so I know you wanna see the data. Mm -hmm. It's not what you're going to want to see, but there are some high points. Keep in mind, this was in February, and it's end of year test in February. And it's one of the reasons that you all agreed that in the future we will do beginning in August, middle in February, and end in May, okay? This year we will actually have another test in May um, so that we can compare, uh, compare our data. Uh, Jen got that arranged with the uh, Galileo people. Uh, I enlarged the bottom part so that you could see um, much better than uh, in the past the, um, what those ranges are and you can see how the ranges have gone up. Mm -hmm. And up at the top you can see the, um, uh, the, the graphs for the three tests. And this is second grade math. <clears throat> I'm going to go, there are a, bu a bunch of these, so I'm going to go through them fairly quickly unless you ask me to stop. You saw this graph before, or this chart before, and wondered why uh, there were no kids in the red when we had so many kids who were minimally proficient. It's because the system, the Galileo uh, assessment and scoring system, does not put anybody in the red until three consecutive tests. So, yep, a lot of kids over there right now. This is really the important graph to me um, uh, because it shows what we want to have happen. So it's in quadrants. Uh, the end test scores are on the left. The expected growth or maintained uh, is on the bottom. And so, the dots that you see in the lower left quadrant are, represent students, individual students. And in, uh, for those students, um, they had lower growth 
and lower achievement. The students in the quadrant above, the upper left, are students who had lower growth um, but higher achievement. In other words, they did much better on the third test, um, uh, but it wasn't huge growth for them. The lower right quadrant are students who had higher growth but still low achievement. So they made big strides from where they had been at the beginning, um, uh, but it was still not where it needed to be. And in the upper right quadrant are students with high growth and higher achievement. When we report these data to you in, uh, in May, or after the testing in May, we will compare that chart, this, this same chart at that time with this chart. And, um, and Jen even has it for the, you have it for the first test too. No, it'd be for the second one, huh? Because it has to show growth and change. So we will have all three so you can see where kids moved this year uh, at the end of the year. Obviously, our desire is to have the most dots in the upper right quadrant, okay? Uh, the other thing I will point out for you here is uh, if you notice, oh, I wish I had a pointer. If you notice at the upper left uh, in the words, it says average growth. That's the growth for our district, for our students, it was 73. And, and uh, down at the bottom where it uh, identifies the red dotted line, the expected growth was 81. So we were below, uh, our students were below mm -hmm. um, uh, that expected growth, our second grade math students. Any questions about that one? Okay. Here's third grade math. And you can see the third test came back up some. And that is including the fact that the range of scores increased. Um, looking at that one, the first uh, benchmark, mm -hmm. they had uh, basically 50% of the students in the passing proficiency or above high proficiency. Yes. Now, however, in the third one, we only have 44%. Mm -hmm. So there really isn't any growth there. But there is, Barb, because look at the proficient range uh, in, that, in that lower table. Proficient is 666 to 717 and highly proficient is 718 to 1109 but for the third test the proficient range the lower the lower limit of that raises to 738 and the lower uh, uh, end of highly proficient raises to 810 it raises almost 100 points so that's why that's why this not this one well first of all this looks better than the previous graph that you saw because many more kids in on on course low uh, and low rather than moderate and high but that's why this one is uh, one that um, uh, shows us uh, the swoop that we want to see as the year goes along so what I want to see in the future is something in from the second test that looks more like this and then the swoop moves over and up for the third test okay so that is moving kids over beyond the expected growth and up above the cut score yeah, now with this one, the average growth, growth was 64 and the expected was 80, so right. we're way under there. We're, uh, we are under there, and we have some others that look more yeah. grim than that. I know. But, but we have some that look really uh, uh, very encouraging as well, uh, and I'll point those out as we go. Here's fourth grade math.
Am I going too fast or too slow? This is number of students, right? It is number mm -hmm. of students. Good question, Jill. Mm -hmm. This is a less happy graph. Fifth grade math. We have yeah. quite a few substitute teachers, long-term subs, at the middle school. And I'm not blaming them because I will tell you that they've all been working hard. Sixth grade math. However, I will point on on this one, this is seventh grade math, that our average growth is 32, and the expected was 34. Pretty close. A small ray of sunshine. Uh, could you it's go back one, one, back one more on that one for me, please? This one? <coughs> back one more, Cassie. Thank that you. one? But we're still staying at a performance level of a minimum proficient mm -hmm. in seventh grade, so that's okay. It's because it because it works as averages. Mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. That's why I think this one is, especially when we'll be able to look at comparisons, this one really tells us more about what's going on with our students, I think, uh, because it kind of lets us look at, without identifying them, looking at what's going on with individual students. This is eighth grade math. Mm -hmm. Don't have a chance. Mm -hmm. that right? okay. Negative growth. Yeah. Negative this is the this is the saddest one. This is second grade ELA. A bit of happiness there. Third grade. And this one, of course, concerns us because students must pass the uh, ELA portion of the state test to be promoted with a few exceptions. This is third grade ELA. Oh, it's the it's the same same group. Yeah, you notice I noticed you gave us third grade twice and no fourth grade results. Oh well, this is fourth grade. Oh, okay. We're coming to fourth grade. Yeah.
And this one's a bit of a happy because our average growth was 38 and the expected growth was 30. So despite the fact that it's still minimally proficient, you can see that test three went up and keep in mind it's end of year test. So a bit of a, a bit of a positive there. But I understand on the, these tests were taken the end of February. So in one month, we start the state testing. So if this is what this is looking like at the end of February, this is basically what our state testing is probably going to look like. It may, uh, but with teachers at, uh, uh, really attending to standards and the kinds of items that are on the state test, um, uh, yeah, but we're in year one of systemic change. This is fifth grade ELA. Our average growth was 49, target was 30. So we have, uh, we have lots of kids who have moved from the left side of the red dotted line to the right side of the dotted line. They've not moved up into above the green line like we would like, but they certainly have moved to the right. Mm -hmm. So this should help you understand a little bit more about why I want to see a swoosh, mm -hmm. okay? Ultimately a swoosh. And then eventually a cluster in that upper right hand. Sixth grade ELA. I would invite you to go to the middle school and observe fifth grade ELA. I would invite you to go to Fox Creek and observe seventh grade math. Because in both of those sets of people, we have high numbers of the coalition of the willing. Here's sixth grade. Seventh grade ELA. Not at all what we want to see. Nope. Although I'm really happy with the number that have moved to the right of the red line, but still, <laughs> no swish. This is eighth grade ELA. A very, uh, our most shining group. And I will tell you that we have uh, I would invite you to go visit the 8th grade ELA classrooms because we have people who have been on board from day one. Expected growth was only five. And we're at 29. Why such a low expected growth rate? I have no idea. Somehow the formulas that Galileo does. Mm -hmm. Needless to say, we have been focusing on ELA and math. Mm -hmm. 
Now the students for on the state level are just third and eighth grade, aren't they, for science? Fifth and eighth for testing. Or fifth and eighth, rather, mm -hmm. for science. Mm -hmm. But we don't want to wait till fifth grade to yeah, see what correct. kids are doing. Correct. So. Definitely not. We don't have the growth charts for science, so. Other questions? Not the best news? No. Not the news we want? Not the news I want? Um, uh, on the other hand, uh, some, some rays of sunshine among those clouds um, that we can connect to what's going on in classrooms. And they the changes. are doing another test, though, just we for will. our information kind of thing at the end yes. of the year. Yes, we're doing a test in May, uh, and hopeful that kids aren't tested out at that point. But um, uh, and it will be Jen. Will it be this the same test again? Because Galileo only has three tests per grade level. They created a new one for us for for May. So um, uh, and and worked with us to have you know that fourth one for this year. So, okay. Uh, because those are important data for us to have in May. You know, instruction continues even during testing and certainly through May. So, and and there's a big stretch between early February and early May in terms of instruction and and um, uh, in learning. So, well, and I I think the May test is probably going to be um, a a better. Um, Look, because that Galileo test, if I'm if I remember correctly, is is a full year. So mm -hmm. when they test in the first benchmark in whenever it is August, it is a full year of whatever the subject is. So the full year of math will half the stuff they haven't even been taught yet. So well, in August they haven't taught any of it. <laughs> well, so. yeah, but so by May it should be a better give us a better view of of. I don't know if it's yeah. accurate, but or or closer to what's as accurate as we can get. When did they change Galileo to be basically a full year test at all times throughout the year? Because it's always been that one. No, it hasn't. Because when I started with Galileo, it we hasn't? no. Oh, okay. Because when I because I worked I with Galileo for ten years, and with the ten years we worked for it, we had it set up basically that the first quarter when we tested it was on the Just standards the that had to be taught for that quarter and each quarter and, and as it progressed then it became more you know the last one of course was a year one but each quarter was was tested on the standards not this t testing kids on stuff that they've never even seen or never had you're of course you're going to have these kind of scores so why to me this is not even close to being an accurate testing thing well but it's the way you can show growth you can't, if you if you just show and I and uh, you know I mean to me that's the value of this is showing growth. Um, uh, so yeah, and you're right. I do recall that it, that originally it was. So you but if you took the test if you took the test at the beginning of the year you hadn't even taught it yet, hadn't even taught first quarter. Um, and I don't remember if we did it right away in August or if we waited till the end of first quarter. We well, might it have. Was a, I know it was always the and then and then if we did and the then quarter. but then I know I, I do recall that the second one, which was for second quarter, was usually done in January after kids had been gone for a couple of weeks. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And and uh, so again, it was what was taught right then. I don't recall when the third one was, but still, even if it was given third quarter. As you say, it was for the standards for the whole year, which many still had not been taught. So uh, I don't know. At some point, you know. I don't know how long that's been since we changed that. Yeah. I don't know. It may have been when I was. We went to the AC Kids Fire 
And then when we came back to Galileo was when we uh, went back to the mm -hmm. year long. So is that been, how many years has that been? We went back to it when we came. Yep. So five years. It had been aspire during those, yeah. Yeah, that's what was used after, after I retired and before I came back. So for four years. So uh, it, it just depends, Barb, on how you look at it. So, you know, one way of looking at it is like what you were looking at. If we had it at the end of each quarter, then there would be some real value in, in having it be just on the standards taught like first quarter and then second quarter or combined first mm -hmm. and second mm -hmm. and then combined first through third and then combined first through fourth. Because that makes sense to me um, uh, if we're doing it that way, but that would require four tests. Mm -hmm. um, and then uh, otherwise, otherwise it strikes me that it is, it's more effective and more useful to us to show that growth uh, if we're going to do it, you know, if we're only going to do three anyway. Now, see, we when we were when I was using it, both here and in Mojave Valley, the, we we were using it as a tool that you would test, and if a student, if your your classes came through with not having accomplished or passed a standard that was being tested then you knew that the next quarter you mm -hmm. had to hit that standard. Mm -hmm. We're here when you've got all these standards that are they're not passing because of course they're not passing, you haven't taught them yet. So it isn't a good technical tool for the teachers to be able to use for evaluation because it, there's all the standards they're saying, well, the, you know, they're not sufficient in these and, the you know. The standards that they've taught them a lot that same information. Yeah. And they just look at the standards that they've taught yeah. and, and look and see where they're at and build their interventions and things around those standards. They don't worry about the ones they haven't taught yet. And that's one of the reasons that we would never consider using Galileo as part of the grading system. Yeah. Because, you know, because it's... Oh, yeah. 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 They do start with standards, too, like Pete said, they'll go in and see, you know, I taught these standards, and this one is still really low. They do reteach it, and then they pull a CFA from Galileo. Yeah. And they use that, and they and then, like, two weeks later, they'll, they'll test, test that, just that standard to see if they reteach um, and improve the score. So they are using it in between for CFAs. Wasn't it at some point that the state um, changed their focus on the AZ merit and growth was a big issue? It's a huge issue. And, and so yeah. I, I think that was about the time the district said, no, yes. we're going to we're gonna do Galileo this way because then we can track the growth. Yes. And, and, it's a, and it's a huge factor in the, um, in the calculation in the formula for our school's letter grades uh, because somebody finally recognized that um, uh, what's really important is, is getting kids from wherever they are with as much growth as possible. Mm -hmm. um, uh, that, you know, that that really tells us more about the quality of instruction than, uh, than uh, having the label of where, you know, where they fall in those four categories. Yeah. Um, uh, and and uh, especially when you're starting with students who are low, it, getting growth is amazing. If you can get a year's growth, I mean, the, uh, think about it. The intention of each year of school is that you get a year's growth. Okay, for students who are below grade level, you want more than a year's growth because you want to help catch them up. You don't want them just to stay static at you know at a year's growth and continue to be, you know, behind where they need to be, um, and and so you have to have methodology for tracking that growth, um, uh, rather than you know just especially when the target moves, especially when the target moves, yeah. you still have to be able to show this kid went from here to here or from here to here, from here to here is not acceptable or not what we want. From here to here is what we want, and and when you can and, and the teachers teachers can look at the individual student data. Uh, we're not going to show that to the public, and yeah. you know, and you certainly don't want to see for each kid. Mm -hmm. um, we don't want kid in you know kid identifiable data, uh, but the teachers look at kid identifiable data to know what strategies to use with those kids. What six thirty? Yeah, yep, we're we're a bit beyond. <laughs> Oh, 
Okay. Now, did you want to continue with your discussion, Charlene? Or are you done? Oh, I'm done. <laughs> I, I think <laughs> Carolyn kind of summed it up for me. Okay, thank you. I didn't want. I didn't really want you to think I was cutting you off. No, that's okay. just talking. <laughs> Thanks for going back to that, Melinda. I appreciate. It. Okay. Item 1.6, adjourning the workshop. I need a motion to adjourn, please. I make a motion we adjourn the workshop. I'll second that motion. All those in favor, I, Melinda Sabrowski. I, Charlene Diaz. I, Fred Rushton. I, Barb Zarzicki. I, Sheila Burnett. Okay. I'm calling the regular meeting of Bullhead City School Board on Thursday, March 14th, at 2024 at 636 uh, p.m. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Roll call. I present Melinda Sabrowski. Charlene <laughs> Diaz here. Fred Rushton here. Barb Zarzicki here. Sheila Barnett here. Would you please stand and say the pledge with me? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Citizens here present, um, I'm hoping that you guys all printed your names on the on the paper in the back of the room. It's nice to know who's been here and who hasn't. Donations. Okay. Donations. Oh, sorry. Excuse me. Ignore me. <laughs> ignore you? No, I don't ever ignore you. That's not. Uh, so item 2.5, call to the public. Uh, go for it. This is the time that the public may speak to the Governing Board regarding issues within the jurisdiction of the Governing Board and subject to reasonable time, space, and manner restrictions as the Governing Board may establish. See policy B, E, D, H. Comments will be limited to three minutes per individual unless specifically waived by the Governing Board. At the conclusion of the call to the public, individual members of the Governing Board may respond to criticism made by those who have addressed the Board, may ask staff to review a matter, or may ask that a matter be placed on a future agenda. However, the Governing Board cannot take action on matters that have not been noticed in advance as part of the agenda. Um, I have one. Sheila, did, uh, yeah, do I need to go down there? Mm -hmm. Yes? Okay. Mm -hmm. Dr. Sheila Barnett is going to talk to us. <laughs> My name is Sheila Barnett. I am here representing the Ladies Auxiliary from uh, AMVETS Post 19 in Fort Mojave. And basically, we just would like to announce a contest that we are going to be doing um, for the students. Uh, it is the National Americanism Contest and um, there will be cash prizes for the students. Uh, there's three categories. Uh, the first category is for kindergarten and first grade. It's actually coloring a flag and then having to answer some questions about the flag. Uh, that will be, each category will have first, second, and third uh, place winners. Um, so we will go from 15 for first place, or, or third place, 30, and then 50 for first. The second is a contest for um, a poster, and the theme for the poster is why is it important to vote? And that is gonna be second through fifth grade, and again, 15, 30, and 50 for the prizes. But my favorite one, personally, um, <laughs> is the essay contest, and that is going to be sixth, seventh, and eighth grade, and again, it's gonna be why is it important to vote? And this one, we're going to do 30, 50, and $100. Mm -hmm. So we will be passing out um, to the younger kids, to the art teachers, to the older kids, um, I believe the students themselves. And we're gonna try to get them in the next couple of days after uh, school comes back in and then uh, announce them, I believe, May 9th at the board meeting, possibly if we can get the kids here to. Money. Money. So, 
Um, it's a cool project. I'm the secretary, so it's kind of been a really neat project for me because I'm a baby vet from my dad, so mm -hmm. um, it's just kind of cool. Yeah. Thank you, Ms. Thank Thanks. You. Are there any other uh, people in the public that would like to speak with it, speak to us? Okay, mm -hmm. I'm going to close um, call to the public and go on to 2.6 donations. Um, early on when, you, when we took the carpeting out and all that kind of stuff, I was in a classroom at the very beginning of school and somebody suggested putting tennis balls on chair bottoms. And then just oh. recently I was in a classroom and they had the tennis balls on the chairs and there was so much difference. So I'm wondering if maybe we should look into getting tennis balls for whatever class wants a tennis ball on their chairs because there was a big difference. And I, one of, um, it was a kindergarten class and there's always <laughs> scraping and stuff <laughs> going on. And, um, I'm, I really appreciate the United States Tennis Association giving us 200 balls, but I think that we need <laughs> about 200 more of those, yeah. or maybe 2,000 more yeah. of those, since there's four chip four legs uh -huh. on the chair. And we, I think that it would be a really sweet thing to do. Thank you very much um, to the Ed Brandt, whoever Ed Brandt is. I wish he was here to say something to him. Because it does work. It does work. Um, I have a question on, on donations. I've been reading on our Facebook page and in the newspaper, and everybody who's been reading to our kids, mm -hmm. that's donated time. It is. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking that we should include something like that on this page. That would be good for next month. We could certainly yeah. get from all mm -hmm. the sites who they had to read, and I that think is that donated time. Because right. it is donation. It's a donation yep. of time. It is. And um, it's not there's not it's not monetary especially but for some of us who are, are retired no but time is money but it's it is so I would <laughs> I would I kind of like to see that I yeah. think it's a good idea because, because we know we had lots of people reading mm -hmm. at our sites lots of people and not everybody got recognized so this might be it would be a good way to do yeah. it mm -hmm. okay thank you um Adoption agenda, 2.7, adoption agenda. I need a motion to adopt the agenda as presented. I'll make a motion to adopt the, adopt the agenda as presented. I second it. All those in favor, I'm Melinda Sabrowski. I, Charlene Diaz. I, Fred Rushton. I, Barbara Zarzicki. I, Sheila Burnett. Dr. Stewart, 2.6. <laughs> You're um, 2.8, excuse me. 2 .8. I would point out to you that this time I made sure that I had both uh, this year's and last year's cumulative reports for uh, discipline. Mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, and I actually sat at my desk and did, uh, um, uh, did the pluses and minuses. Mm -hmm. uh, we, were doing, we were doing great up until yeah. winter break. <laughs> and... Uh, Anywhere. And then we had uh, we had a little hiccup uh, in uh, because we were we were down twenty percent for first semester from last year. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we did really um, well. Was, we did really good. well. Um, and um, I I know that the principals have told me that kids kind of came back from winter break a little wound, yeah. <laughs> and it shows in this in the discipline report. So January uh, January was up some, and uh, February was up quite a bit. Um, so we'll we'll watch what happens next in terms of uh, we're still we're still at a total lower than yeah, we were a say, year the ago. The total is the low, the, yeah, the total is still lower. It's not it's not twenty percent anymore, but uh, but it's um, uh, it's still better than uh, better than a year ago. So mm -hmm. um, so you guys are on top of the uh, trend. Yes, very much okay. so. Okay. Okay. Um, so I wanted to note that for you. Um, uh, you have the financial reports. And uh, if you have any questions about any of those, I'd, I'd be happy to address them. Um, would it be possible, oh, okay, financial reports. Um, I have down here the daily, the 100th 
Dave, that's on here, isn't it? Yes, it is right there. It is. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, interestingly enough, we were back up a little bit. That was we very were. nice. We were. Is there a chance on this kind of thing mm -hmm. to do it by month? You get it each month. Oh, no, you don't. No. No, <laughs> no you don't. Would it be, or uh, by quarter? To show it. Or to yeah, show, yeah, yeah. To yeah. show the changes sure. so that maybe we can figure out if there's a trend that we're having more people come in or more out at this yeah. time and maybe try and figure out why that's happening. So to show, uh, so like the first first day, which was happened to be the end of the July. last day of July, but um, so show, so then show August, September, October. We can do that. A, yeah. a simple bar graph, just a simple yeah. bar graph. We can certainly do that. Because I know that there was a different, you know, there was some ups and downs in, in there. It would be really kind of, interesting mm -hmm. to figure out where the influx really yeah. came from came at at what right. position you know? and especially if we use this as a base year but actually mm -hmm. i think probably jenny becker could go back and do last year and we could that i'll ask her if she yeah. could do yeah. last year i'm compare not i won't two. swear to it but i think she could go back and do last year and then we could compare mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. to see if there are any trends. Otherwise, see, this becomes kind of a base year for us to figure out what's going on, yeah. and, and, and that's that, a good and that's idea. That's fine. Base years are good. Yeah, it I'm is. Got to start nothing. somewhere. Yeah, yeah. got to start somewhere. Um, Otherwise, uh, did you have other questions? Yeah. Okay. okay. On the food, food, food service. Yeah. I'm trying to find it here. I know I had it. I, know I copied it off. Um, are all the kids eating still? Yeah, we're still CEP, which is everybody's free. And, and will it, we long? continue to, we, uh, we, we apply for that on five year, in five year uh, rounds, and I think we're in year two of, year, of uh, the five year round. Okay. So, and yeah. And the kids, when they're eating, how much of it gets thrown away? Do we have any idea? I don't have any idea. Some things get put on the th no thank you table. Oh, uh, okay. There is a no, there's a way to yeah. Recycle, so recycle, anything that's okay. packaged or uh, or like milk, uh, none of those things could be. You know, I, I used to think I used to think years ago, gosh, if kids aren't drinking the milk, why is it going in the trash? You know, could it not be used? But once mm -hmm. it's sold, it can't be. Yeah. It can't be resold. Mm -hmm. So we started the no thank you table, and uh, at each of our sites. So if there are packaged things, so the milk cartons if they've not been opened. Um, brownies or whatever granola bars um, uh, can go on uh, the no thank you table and then uh, kids who bring their lunch because there are still a few kids who bring their lunch or other kids who want a second milk uh, or you know or a second whatever that's been packaged can go can go do that uh, you know and get more food um, and then I will uh, remind you also that the snacks we have at the end of the day in the after school program uh, are also part of this program, so uh, you know that's a that's a free thing for our kids who stay for after school programs, mm -hmm. and that's all part of the food service. Okay, I was just thinking that for giving f giving food food <coughs> away or giving not giving it away, that's that's a bad way to say it. I'm sorry. Um, if we're providing food for free, that we have some way of of keeping things from going yes. into the trash that. Yeah. perhaps can be reused and absolutely I guess, you, I guess you've already solved yeah. that problem and then as a footnote to that uh, if you recall last year um, uh, occasionally the Chartwells did uh, test foods with kids mm -hmm. and they've done that this year uh, particularly up at Fox Creek and um, uh, have added a couple of items to their menu rotation uh, bec based on the feedback from the students because they were things that uh, had not been on the menu before and so they you know they they test drove it, mm -hmm. <laughs> test drove those items with the kids, and uh, and the kids, oh, that's that's pretty good. So they put it on the on the menu, and and what that does is it it does increase student participation, especially at the junior high level, because they tend to be the ones who don't eat, yeah. or don't yeah. eat as much. And so you know if you can figure out ways to get things on the menu that they like, they're much more likely to eat. Mm -hmm. And I remember on during the workshop, you know, the mm -hmm. graph mm -hmm. where the the food was down. Um, so we have no idea why. 
I have no idea why our, yeah, I have no idea why, I'll have to investigate that and find out why our costs are higher. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if it's because of, you know, we're, we contracted out. Um, I don't know, we'll, we'll find out. And yet we've had, uh, we have started using some of the, uh, uh, for some things that we need to either repair or replace in our kitchens and our cafeterias, but particularly in our kitchens, um, uh, we've now started charging that off to this account as opposed to M&O. So our, our wonderful facilities people who've been out fixing things and, you know, fixing electrical outlets and, you know, all kinds of things in our kitchens, re repairing uh, uh, the motors in the freezers, all mm -hmm. kinds of things. Um, that we've been charging those expenses, not the salaries, but the expenses for the items against this account as opposed to M&O. Um, uh, because we've, uh, you know, the accountant has said, you, you guys need to spend more of that money. And um, uh, so we are. Okay. So, um, you know, we learn all the time how, how to better use our budgets. Okay. Um, the, the actual M&O budget, can you pull that one up? Where is EI on this? Uh, it isn't on here. Okay. You mean IE? I, yeah. excuse no, me. it isn't on here because 100% of it for this current year was paid with grants. Perfect. 100%. That's, that was, that's what I, so, that's what I yeah. wanted to know. Yeah. Okay, thank it's you. It's not on here at all. Okay. Thank you, thank you. That solved that problem. Okay. It has actually, if you recall, uh, I give you three of the 48 budgets mm -hmm. in, in the financial report. So, uh, it, you know, if I, if I brought you the, all of them or brought you, in, in that case, ESSER 2, ESSER 3, and ESSER 2, and the Governor's Grant 1, and Title Two and Title One, mm -hmm. but if we we saw the grant one, we would have to pay Jennifer more, right? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we don't want to see it. Okay, mm -hmm. uh, the only updates I have for you because I've been very busy the last okay. three weeks working on salary schedules and uh, uh, calendars, uh, the calend the actual work calendars because we want to get contracts and uh, work agreements out and I have to determine mm -hmm. start dates and end dates for those uh, for their for work agreements and contracts um, and uh, and working really hard to get uh, those salary increases and make sure that we uh, could cover them um, uh, even though our enrollment is down and so our you know our funding for next year the base funding is going to be probably a, a bit lower or break even if they give us an increase because of course the legislature has not decided on that so anyway i've been busy with that so i don't have a whole lot of updates but i will tell you uh, that uh, when we sent the resolution uh, out to the education committees for the legislature and to the governor's office uh, the only response we got was from the governor's office and uh, they thanked us for that information and uh, uh, would certainly work it into their uh, their work process uh, and then I also learned uh, today that uh, Topak uh, governing board adopted um, essentially the same resolution at their last meeting um, okay. to support uh, those things that you all had said so okay, um, okay. that's nice of them it is nice yeah do you, did anybody else have any questions on the uh -uh. superintendent report? Mm -hmm. No? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, board member updates, anything new? Um, I just went and read at the middle school and uh, besides reading, I went and I observed a couple math classes while I was there and stuff and um, I was very impressed by one of the math teachers that I observed. Uh, it was a sixth grade math class and he was extraordinary and he did a, a very 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 good job and had fantastic classroom control good. it was interesting I, I went to a kindergarten class 
And one of the kindergartners was actually reading at a third grade level. Oh, wow. So we did Dr. Nice Seuss now. as a play. I took, uh, I, we were doing Cat in the Hat. So I took uh, the narrator. The kid took the, the fish. You know the fish that says, no, 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 mom's going to get upset. Yeah. And um, she, she did an excellent job. We had more fun in that class. That was really kind of neat, yeah. neat to do. There were several classes, though, that, I mean, Moha or Desert, Desert Valley had me so booked that I have to go back there on Monday <laughs> to finish because <laughs> we took too long to read the book. But anyway. And you were there. You went in. I was at Diamondback. They had me do all of second and all of third. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. And then yeah. I went to the middle school. Yeah. But, I think we um, were all at the middle school. school. Uh, yeah. uh, some, uh, I mean, they, they wanted us badly. Fred, where did you go? I went to uh, preschool, Miss Alvarez's preschool, and uh, got to read to three little classrooms there. And I'm telling you, those kids are just, just so much fun and amazing um, and then I also went to middle school as well mm -hmm. so I was, very, I was very impressed with uh, uh, middle school I read <laughs> the the lady that was helping me selected uh, suggested a dr. Seuss book for them <laughs> and lo and behold as it turned out it was a very interesting book one I'd never heard of before or read before but it had a very, a very uh, appropriate message for the kids. But I was, I was really so impressed with their behavior and their attentiveness to to listen to this old guy read this boring book. <laughs> and uh, but it was, it was really uh, very enjoyable. I'm glad I went. Yeah, at the middle school, I actually just passed the book around. I started it, and then they started getting restless. So I said, and then they started started uh, reading, and it was. You know, I think that's why it took us so much longer because passing the book. Anyway, Dr. Burnett, did you get a chance? Uh, no, I plan on going Wednesday morning to probably Diamondback. Way cool. All right. I forgot how hard Dr. Seuss's books are to oh. read. Well, yeah, yeah, and upside down, reading them <laughs> upside down, and you know, with my dyslexia, and it's like, whoa! <laughs> I didn't read really Dr. Seuss in my class. I learned the true story of the three little pigs. Wow. So from the wolf side. <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of cool. It was anyway, fun. <laughs> it was a good time. I had and, a good time. And so that the public doesn't think you all were ignoring the junior high, junior high students went to read at Diamondback. I was going to say, they, yeah. Um, they, so they, yeah. they, they, yeah. they flipped the role. Yeah. So yeah. they were involved as well. Yeah. Had they called and said, would you please come up and read to us, I probably would have said, are you kidding? You guys read better than I do. <laughs> um, but we, I would have been there. Yes. Yeah. Of course I would. Any other updates? Mm -mm. Okay. So we can all honestly say we are going to be or have been in the classroom during mm -hmm. March. Yes. Yes. We finally <laughs> got something accomplished. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. Okay. Uh, Consent agenda. Um, we've already talked about 3.3. .3. I was going to ask that that be pulled, but we've already discussed that. Mm -hmm. We discussed that in uh, oh. in our workshop. Probably 3.6, as opposed to 3.6. Yeah, okay. 3.6. Okay. Um, um, could I ask that 3.5 be pulled? Okay. And can we move that to an executive session? No. No, we can just pull it. Okay. Let's, I'd, I'd like 3.5 to be pulled. Okay. Anybody else? Okay. I would like to talk about 3.13. One, three. One, yeah. One, three. Okay. Madam President, uh -huh. could I ask a question, please? Yes. Um, uh, three point five is information only it's not an action item okay is there oh i just uh, i don't know maybe it shouldn't pull it i i'm just wondering um why this one was even brought to us it has to be by law i have to notify you that i have uh, that i have issued those notifications 
So anytime we have an underperforming teacher, the school board is notified to of be it? notified. Yes, that I have sent the letter. I have oh. actually presented the letter because I do it in person. Okay. Okay. And, and, and I, in that case, let's not pull it. Let's go ahead and leave it there. <laughs> okay. So we're not going to pull that one. No. And it ha and by the way, it ha I mean, it's uh, you know, I could okay. inform you in some of my informal email yeah. updates that I send to all of you but those are informal and and, and it has to be documented yeah. that I have that I have shared that information with you okay then I withdraw my request yeah. to pull that one that nope. was new information thank you it, yeah um, I still want to pull one three point one three okay 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 pull that okay um, you need a motion we need a motion to accept the consent agenda with the with the exception of 3.13 I'll make a motion to um, approve the consent agenda except for 3.13 we're pulling that one point of order point of clarification was not 3.6 asked to be pulled as well mm. 3.6 I thought we decided I I was going to pull that one yeah. But we already talked about that during workshop. Okay. Did you want to talk to it again? No, I missed that part. Mm -hmm. It was 3.6, right? Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. No, 3, okay. We already had the, a, a presentation on that. Not a very happy presentation, but a presentation. Mm, no. No. No, 3.6 is different. Is certified employees. <coughs> I In think you were talking about. It's all employees. 3.6 is the one that okay. uh, asks you to authorize us to offer contracts yeah. and work agreements to all current employees who are listed there uh, and that the salaries there are the current salaries, not the salaries that would be offered to them for next year. Okay. Yeah. And that some of those salaries are inaccurate because, uh, as annual salaries because people came late. Okay, so their annual salary for some of those folks my, besides the one that was just 19000 for a teacher, um, uh, some of those salaries are going to be short what we would pay somebody for a full year because they came late and didn't right. start, uh, you know, in July. I understand. Okay. Okay. Did you want to pull it, Fred? No. Because we can discuss it even more. No, oh, that's good. I'm good. Thank you. Hmm. Did you get a second? Yes, we she did. We didn't get a second yet. And well. then I asked when we were doing the uh, approvals, uh, I. What is that I'm supposed to say? You second. Yes. yes. No, you were seconding. I second the. I thought we did the roll call. Yeah. Yeah, we have. We haven't done that yet. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Sorry. Well, would you that. like to start the roll call? <laughs> sure. <laughs> okay, do it. All right. I, Fred Rushton. I, Barb Zarzicki. I, Sheila Barnett. I, Charlene Diaz. I, Melinda Sabrowski. <laughs> See. <laughs> All right. Equivalency. Okay. Um, or equality. Equality is not equivalent. Yeah. 1.3. No. 3.13. 3. 3. 3. 3. 3. 3. 3. 3. I am so sorry. <laughs> I woke up left-handed today. And that is always <laughs> a bad thing mm -hmm. because that means that I start reversing things. So uh, please forgive me. It's I, okay. I apologize. And that's why I said play it, play it. There's <laughs> no way I can read it. Um, I was just really curious on this one. Can you just show us this? And Madam President, could we have uh, uh, Mrs. Lott come and respond to any questions or comments <laughs> that you all have? She I was would, the one I worked on that for. There's a, there's a, a chart or something. Yeah, that you a gave graph. us. Uh, isn't it with this? Or, Cassie, is there a graph with this? Yeah. Or yeah. Like a chart, well, a table. In my board oh, that was in oh. your board report. That's okay. She can, she can get it. Um, oh, there it is. Scorecard yes. report. I'm. Yeah. But it's, it's basically board. the same thing, isn't it? It just breaks down. That's just not one. Oh, you can type on. I guess I just never have seen this before. So. <laughs> We used to do it with the high school, um, when the early ground was you know, high school. 
So all throughout the year, our committee has gone through each module. They've taken the module back to um, a committee at their own school, and they've rated each of the indicators under each module to see where our strengths and our needs are as far as health and wellness in our district. And so in some cases, like if it's PE teach, like, like related more to PE teaching and health and fitness, that kind of thing, our PE teachers would fill it out. Um, the health attendants filled out the piece on the health attendant piece, and then chart wills did fill out the nutrition piece for us. Are we moving to pull some of the things in the red over to green? Yes. Okay. Yes. All right. Now go to her chart. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I'm, I thought they were both in the same place. Uh, have you guys seen this stuff before? Mm -mm. This is interesting, isn't it? Mm -hmm. I think we did it more formally this year than what's been done in the past. Okay. Yeah. Because it yeah. hasn't been done for a while. So we decided to Well, my question <laughs> obviously was on the, the table that I just saw. Um, and, and this is in policy? The wellness is, you know, there's a wellness policy, mm -hmm. and uh, and truthfully, the this process is supposed to happen annually, and so um, uh, they've done it more informally the last four years, and I think Jen intended this year to make it much more formal. Okay. okay. I just had never seen it, I'm Jennifer. Yeah. I really don't. I had a question on the, the red, green, and. Mm -hmm. And then that stuff, but I didn't have, I really don't have a question on this. Okay. But thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Anybody else have questions though before mm -hmm. I, before she goes and sits down? And <laughs> <laughs> no, like you said, it was something I'd never seen before. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Now, do we have to, we have to vote on this mm -hmm. one, right? Um, I need a motion to accept items 3.13. Wellness plan, please. I make a motion we accept item 3.13, fiscal year 25 wellness plan. I, sec I second that motion. Is Does somebody want to start the roll call? Sheila. Okay. I, Sheila Barnett. I, Barb Zarzicki. I, Fred Rushton. I, Charlene Diaz. I, Melinda Sebraski. Kind of confuse everybody. <laughs> <laughs> See, so she's really left handed. We'll do everything backwards tonight. It's, it's like uh, Charlene says, change is hard. <laughs> <laughs> yes. It is. Oh. Yeah, so would, you, would you put that calendar up, please? Thank you. At this time, we, were, we are going to convene to executive no, session. We've no, we've got the we're school board business. first. Did I forget? Yep. Yeah, old business. We have one one old business. business. Calendar. I got new business up here. Cassie. Yeah, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, we have a calendar in front of us. Oh Madam President and board members, uh, you did approve a calendar for next year, a uh, month or so, two, a couple months ago. Mm -hmm. uh, but one of the things that we have recognized, uh, as, uh, as I've kind of indicated to you in the workshop, is that we really need to address the standards for science and social studies. And, uh, and we got a late start on that, <coughs> excuse me, addressing standards for ELA and math this year. Um, and so um, two things have happened. One is that um, uh, our leadership team and all of the sites have um, uh, talked about what we're doing on professional development days, which were already on the calendar, uh, and devoting three hours of each of those days next year specifically to uh, pulling the, the teams together, particularly from our three elementary schools, uh, to, to work on standards, and, but to work on planning and so that we can have some consistency across the district. We do have kids that move regularly back and forth between among our elementary schools particularly, and uh, so there's real value in having those complete teams work together. Uh, which they can't do during the week. So that was already in place. But we recognized that that was probably not going to be enough time uh, for that kind of planning uh, for science and social studies uh, to take place. So uh, I'm proposing to you that we add um, four quarterly half days uh, for that kind of planning. And there would not be other professional development. There would not be other things going on. There would be additional planning days uh, for all of our teachers. So you can see those dates uh, in the columns on the left and the right, are, they're in red. 
Uh, so there would be a day in August uh, that would essentially deal with first quarter, a day in October to deal with second quarter, a day in January to deal with third quarter, and a day in March to deal with, and, and they're half days, they're four hour days. Uh, and this would, uh, this would fall into the 1,488 uh, contract hours uh, that our teachers have. Um, uh, so, and be very targeted for, um, for planning. So I'm asking approval to add those four half days to the calendar. It doesn't change anything relative to students or what parents need to, to do, but uh, it does, it is part of the formal calendar. Do I have a motion to accept the calendar as revised? Madam President, I would like to move that we accept the calendar that is presented to us this evening. I'll second that motion. All those in favor, I'm Melinda Sabrowski. Aye, Charlene Diaz. Aye, Fred Rushton. Aye, Bob Zarzicki. Aye, Sheila Burnett. Now we're going to accept no. the we session. get to go we to the next one, don't we, Yeah. We've got to okay. We're, go we're going to convene to executive session pursuant to ARS 38. 431.03A2. It's a discussion or consideration of records exempt from by law from public inspection, including the receipt or and discussion of information or testimony that is specifically required to be maintained by law, by state or federal law. Um, I need a motion to convene <coughs> to executive station se executive session. I make a motion we convene to executive session. I second that motion. All those in favor, aye, Melinda Sabrowski. Aye, Charlene Diaz. Aye, Fred Rushton. Aye, Barbara Zarzicki. Aye, Sheila Burnett. Okay, we're now in executive session.
Motion to reconvene or to come back to regular session, please. I make a motion we reconvene to regular session. I second that motion. All those in favor? I'm Melinda Sabraski. I'm Charlene Diaz. I Fred Rushton. I Barb Zarzicki. I Sheila Burnett. Um, seven point two. Do we have a? Oh, sorry. Yeah. Do we have a motion? I make, what we just did. I make a motion that um, 
the parent request for early start of the <coughs> kindergarten student is denied. I'll second that motion. Okay. All those in favor? I'm Melinda Sabrowski. I Charlene Diaz. I Fred Rushton. I Barb Zarzaki. I Sheila Burnett. Thank you. Item 8.1, GCO evaluation of professional staff members. Uh, uh, this is the additional first reading. Cass, if you'll put it up. <coughs> um, Madam President and board members, um, <laughs> in reviewing this after you had the fir first reading last month, uh, I realized there were some other things that probably needed to be changed and updated. So there are now some significant changes in this uh, that are in red. <coughs> and uh, so I'm recommending that um, I'm recommending that you consider tonight a second first reading um, so that you have an opportunity to think about it if you need to. Uh, and also if there were any feedback, public feedback, which almost never happens, but sometimes you know we have to be, uh, we have to be aware that the public is out there and has the opportunity to let you know their thoughts on these things. Okay. I appreciate the idea of second reading on this, or the first, mm -hmm. second first reading. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever. Um, on this, I appreciate that. I would, I would think it needs more time with it. Um, other than defining a. a a tenure, I, I've always called them tenured teachers. The teacher's been here three years <coughs> and... Continuing teachers, continuing yeah. Teachers. Okay. Um, is there anything major with it? Well, the... Um, <coughs> uh, Cass, if you'll... I think if you'll go down a little bit. Um, okay, so... Okay, so here where you can see the, the things that had to do with inadequacy of classroom performance. Um, <coughs> Um, that, to me, the way it read was uh, confusing, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and it made it difficult for me to, to enact the policy when it was confusing. Yeah. And uh, so I, I looked at the policies from other school districts and, and um, uh, you know, to, to try to figure out some wording that made sense yeah. um, to what we really wanted to do. And, um, and so that's why you have the wording, the wording that's here. You know, I didn't invent it. I, I kind of stole it and and mushed it around a little bit from others, but, um, but tried to make it so it was just very clear what, what, uh, what, and what inadequate classroom performance is um, uh, and, uh, and how we would deal with that, uh, you know, in a way that's obviously equitable and fair for employees, uh, but also, but also uh, maintains the expectations that we have for folks. <coughs> don't need any action on this we'll see it again mm -hmm. item 8.2 ASBA policy advisory 763 to 786 first reading mm -hmm. this is what we saw in the um, workshop in the workshop mm -hmm. um, first reading that means we get another chance to read them again <laughs> um, I thought I thought we you were going to pull the uh, high school. We hadn't, uh, I didn't tell Cass to do that okay. for this time, but we'll pull it before the second reading. Okay, thank you. Doesn't apply to us. Mm -hmm. Any so questions? IKF, we'll pull. Mm -hmm. On the first, for the first reading? Okay, it gives us another chance to read that stuff. Item 8.3, Science Olympiad team overnight travel request. Holy cow, where did these guys get to go? Phoenix? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh man, how many of them? Mm -hmm. Ten. Ten? Ten? Yeah. <coughs> Whoa. Yep, they've qualified again for the state level. Oh, um, and last year they yeah, did they the did little. They did really well last yes. year. Yes. Last year was phenomenal. Yes. Mm -hmm. And last year uh, they did the wildlife, uh, the zoo and the aquarium, yes? No. Yeah, Absolutely. last year, and, and um, so that's what makes it an overnight trip, um, but it gives them a, an opportunity to, 
for lack of a better word, see some science, yeah. <laughs> um, uh, you know, that they might not otherwise get to experience. Wonderful, yeah. wonderful. You, want, you really do want a, a tired night, right? <laughs> Herding um, these cats? Night is better than two o'clock in the morning. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> do I have a motion to approve the, their travel? I make a motion to approve Fox Creek Science and the team to travel to uh, Phoenix to the uh, state tournament and see wild, Wildlife World Zoo and Aquarium. And when is the date of that? April 5th and 6th. Oh, that's coming up. Yeah. Do I have I'll a actually second? be in Phoenix that week. I'll second that motion. Okay. All those in favor? I'm Melinda Sabraski. I, Charlene Diaz. I, Fred Rushton. I, Barbara Zerzicki. I, Sheila Barnett. And good luck. And we expect to see ribbons <laughs> and trophies <laughs> and smiles on their faces and probably on yours, okay? Thank you for taking care of our kids. 8.4, authorize the superintendent <coughs> to sign legal documents with the city of Bullhead City. Uh, Madam President and board members, um, I think probably we all agree that you've already given me that authorization by <laughs> hiring me, and it is in policy that, uh, that I can do those things. However, um, uh, with some things right now with the DEN project, um, the city attorney uh, uh, wanted a little more formal authorization, and so uh, I'm asking you to do an authorization that uh, lets me uh, represent legally and you know have the authority to represent the district with other business with the city that might come in the future, uh, but in this case specifically for these two uh, these two items, and they happen to be. Um, uh, easement grant granting easement for utilities at the den project uh, but we I'm sure there will be other things in the future and I'd prefer not to have to bring them all to you separately thank you yes. <laughs> appreciate that <laughs> do I have a motion to authorize um, dr. Stewart to sign legal documents for city of Bullhead City I'll make a motion to authorize the superintendent to sign legal documents with the city of Bullhead City I'll second that motion. All those in favor? I, Melinda Sabraski. I, Charlene Diaz. I, Fred Rushton. I, Barbara Zerzicki. I, Sheila Burnett. Okay. Item 8.5 Intergovernmental Agreements with Colorado River Union High School School District for Music Academy. Is this something new or have we done This it is new and it's pretty exciting to me. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> the high school uh, superintendent approached me, oh, probably about six weeks ago uh, with this idea. Um, if you'll put, put the, uh, I mean, this, this is the formal language, but the idea is that um, uh, to grow our music programs, so to help grow our music program mm -hmm. and then to uh, continue to grow the high school music program, um, uh, to have some connection between the two districts. And so uh, they were offering to, um, <clears throat> to teach our students the last two periods of their day, of their uh, school day, um, which would encompass the last period of our junior high school day and then some time after school. Um, and they would transport um, uh, the students who signed up. This would just be another elective mm -hmm. for our junior high students, seventh and eighth grade. Um, the high school would transport the students down to the high school to participate in band or uh, chorus or whatever, uh, various music things, um, and then they would bring them back. Um, uh, we won't have after school programs next year, so we won't be running after school uh, transportation. So uh, parents of students who would be involved in this uh, would have to agree to come, you know, pick the kids up. Uh, but it's such a good opportunity for our kids to, uh, you know, to have a continuum of music instruction starting in seventh grade and then going on through the high school. Um, uh, and that excites me because, you know, I, I grew up in a tiny, tiny community with a K-12 school and, and started in high school band as a seventh grader. So, uh, you know, to have six years of that experience was wonderful. And uh, uh, so it's exciting to me that we have this opportunity to work with the high school on this. 
Do we currently have a band? At yes, we do. We have a band and, and we have a small chorus. Um, and uh, we had very active uh, program at the, at the middle school and at the junior high um, uh, three or four years ago. And uh, we had, uh, we had uh, strings mm -hmm. and uh, then the high school did not have a strings instructor and, and we lost ours, he retired. Uh, and so some of that has just kind of, eh, and we don't have, uh, you know, the music position at the middle school is one of our vacancies. And uh, so, you know, the, the, um, uh, the, the pipeline into the junior high is a little weaker. The pipeline then into the high school is weaker. Mm -hmm. And uh, so this is something that will kind of reestablish that, uh, you know, that uh, continuum will it, will of music. Will it our, the program? No. No, we will still offer band, and we will still offer the, the full okay. program that we offer at, at Fox Creek. What we probably would do, I'm, I'm kind of speaking out of turn perhaps for less, although he and I have discussed this, um, that last period at Fox Creek would probably become the prep period for the music teacher. So the music teacher could go to the high school with the students um, and, um, uh, you know, and, and be part of that process. So. Um, it, it's pretty <coughs> exciting um, for us, pretty innovative kind of program. So the high school would, would transport both ways? Yes. To the high school and back to Fox yes. Creek? Yes, and, and we'll pay the teachers. And, at Fox Creek. Yeah, okay. so no cost to our district at all. They would put all the costs, um, uh, and our kids would get all the benefits. And so yeah. would this be every day or just mm -hmm. four, four days, days a week? week. Mm -hmm. Four days a week. That's that cool. is a good way for yeah. them to to get the kids ready yes. and excited. I love opportunities that are win win win. You know, this mm -hmm. is a win for kids, and it's a win for mm -hmm. both districts. And and uh, you know, you you try to take those opportunities whenever you can find them. Mm -hmm. Do I have a motion to approve? I make a motion we approve. Uh, the intergovernmental agreement with uh, Colorado River, River Union High School District for the Music Academy for the junior high students. I'll second that motion. All those in favor? I, Melinda Sabraski. <coughs> I, Charlene Diaz. I, Fred Rushton. I, Barb Sarzicki. Yeah. I, Sheila Burnett. Item 8.6, agreement for with educational <coughs> exchange partners. This is this is explain yeah. explain the h1 oh. <laughs> yeah. and the j1 for me okay um uh if you recall a month or so ago i asked for your approval to um <coughs> look at uh, uh, w uh, an, an additional way to recruit foreign teachers since finding teachers from the u.s is, a, is problematic and uh and i was particularly looking for special ed for preschool uh, because that's a very difficult, those are very difficult positions to fill. You authorized that and kind of indicated actually beyond what I asked for, which was let's look into this for everything. So uh, Jen and I reached out to uh, four agencies, one local and three uh, not local agencies to see, okay, what services do you offer uh, in this, in this uh, realm? Um, what are the costs to the district? And, uh, and, and why should we consider your agency as, you know, as the best? Because the costs are, uh, in terms of, uh, are fairly similar across the board. The difference is the J-1 visa is a cultural exchange. And uh, so the folks who, sign, who, who get a J-1 visa, the idea is that they come, they share their culture with us, they learn about teaching and learning in the United States, and they go back and they share that in, in, in their home country. Um, and, it's, and it has a time limit. So usually it starts as a three year, um, and, um, uh, but they can apply for extensions. So this year, uh, and we've had teachers apply for extensions in the past, and we, you know, and they have, have stayed. Uh, we were fortunate, I think, in some ways fortunate that the pandemic allowed some folks to stay without uh, even a, a, a real extension yeah. because either they couldn't leave the U.S. <laughs> uh, because there were times when you couldn't leave the U.S. Mm -hmm. or they couldn't return to their home country because their home country wouldn't take them. So uh, we, had a, we had a couple of people for six years and, and uh, when it's ordinarily three. 
this year for the first time I authorized that our district would pay for the, the uh, request for extension and that's part of our plan for retaining people uh, once we get them here um, and so uh, we have a number of our Filipino teachers who have uh, who this for whom this is their third year who are requesting uh, two-year extension uh, and so we were paying for that the the uh, but then when they go back they have to stay two years they cannot request coming back to the United States for two years okay the H1 visa um, is a working status visa and it is for folks who are needed in the US for positions for for which uh, it is difficult to find people for the jobs mm. so we know that in the US right now uh, it's very difficult to find enough people to fill teaching positions mm -hmm. that's not just an Arizona problem it's not just a Bullhead City problem um, uh, this started I think originally because they were there were not enough people in the medical field mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. in some of those yeah. fields so uh, in this case, we have to make the request for uh, 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 for somebody to be able to come with an H one V H one B visa, and there are there are expenses, uh, there are legal fees, you know, attorney fees, uh, and some other fees, um, and uh, it, so it runs around. There's a first time fee, and then there's an annual fee. Uh, usually uh, from some of these companies and so it's six thousand dollars or so uh, per person uh, for us to say we need teachers in these positions and we'll pay to help get them here okay the other thing is that uh, that it's automatic for six years uh, as opposed to the three and uh, in that in that time, uh, the individual can apply for a green card, which is a, a legitimate mm -hmm. uh, work card in the U.S., and can apply for uh, start the application process for citizenship. <coughs> so usually, the folks who come to the U.S. under an H-1B want to come and stay, and so they could be here on the visa for six years, but then they could also achieve citizenship and uh, or be in the citizenship uh, process and be able to stay longer um, so um, uh, we we reached out to these companies we got information uh, this company educational exchange partners um, is a national company it recruits from around the world um, but they have an offices in Las Vegas and uh, not only were their fees lower than uh, for the, the other companies uh, but they also do some things that um, uh, pick up some of the tasks that we've been doing with our J-1s. And they also do J-1s as well, but we primarily want to do business with them because of the H-1B. Um, but they'll meet the, the teachers at the airport, <coughs> excuse me, transport them here, and we've been having mm -hmm. to do that. Um, mm -hmm. And then they follow up. They do some classes on classroom discipline. Uh, classroom management uh, and then they come and visit the teachers in the classroom as well so uh, we think their services are, uh, mm -hmm. are, are you know very uh, worthwhile in addition to what we saw from the other companies so um, I'm requesting your permission to um, actually Melinda would have to sign it but um, uh, for us to set up an agreement with this company and then any of our folks who are currently here um, if they're looking to change uh, sponsoring agencies, we would recommend that they work with this company, and uh, uh, and you know try to try to get to the place where we're really only dealing with one agency. Mm -hmm. We're not going to make anybody do that, but uh, you know we're going to support that if that's the case. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, if <coughs> we we go with these and they they bring teachers over for us. Is there a commitment from that after we've paid this money to get the teacher here? Are, is there going to be a commitment from that teacher that they have to be here for the yes. full six years that they can't, you know, work for us for a year and decide they want to go to another district or something? Exactly. If we're paying the fee, mm -hmm. then they must stay with us. Okay. And and we have had a little bit of that with the uh, with the J ones, mm -hmm. um, uh, particularly last year we had a couple of folks who uh, came and were here for a year and and uh, chose to go someplace else. Mm -hmm. Um, for various reasons. So, yeah, if, if we're paying the fee, they work for us. Okay. I was just going to say that too. 
H1s were the petitioners, so when they come over, they have to work for us. Mm-hmm. J1s were not, so mm-hmm. J1s can, can move around. Good, Good question. question. Well, do I have a motion to <coughs> approve? I make a motion, Madam President, that we approve this measure and agree to allow educational exchange partners to represent us and recruit teachers for us. All those in favor? I'm Melinda Sebrasco. Yes, second. Oops. Oh, we need a second. I'll second it. Thank you. <laughs> I'm Melinda Sebrasco. I'm Charlene Diaz. I'm Fred Rushton. I'm Barbara Zarzicki. I'm Sheila Burnett. <clears throat> okay. 8.7, security features for site and district office. Madam President and board members, um, <clears throat> I bring this one to you partly because, it, uh, mostly because of the uh, high amount of money we're talking about spending here. Um, I don't usually bring you things in the $10,000 range, but when we're approaching 100,000, I think I need your backing on those. Um, <clears throat> We have addressed a lot of things with fences and gates and procedures, um, but uh, it has left us in a situation where our, now our most vulnerable uh, spot is where people come into the office. Mm -hmm. And uh, and the way our offices are designed, of course we want our employees in and out from on campus and students too, um, uh, but but currently that means that anybody who might, might endanger our folks can come in the front door to the office and literally have access to the entire campus uh, very easily. Not that they couldn't jump jump fences and those kinds of things. We know they could do that, but um, we all know from what we've seen in the news that frequently the folks who want to create problems will come right in the front door. And so uh, we're looking at a system here where um, <clears throat> for uh, we would control folks' entrance into the office from the outside, pleasantly. You know, we'd have a we'd have a voice box and a whatever, but they would be buzzed in. So there's an opportunity for our folks to see uh, if there's a, a danger before somebody comes in. But more importantly, uh, once they're in the office. Uh, we, we want a system that uh, uh, would prevent anybody in the office uh, from just going through other doorways and getting onto campus. Um, but we also want that, to, we want not to make it so um, <coughs> awful that our employees can't get into the office when they need to. So this involves a variety of <coughs> magnet locks and, and those kinds of things and badges that um, uh, right now, most of us have the key fob that get us in these doors, um, but we would embed them in. Uh, we would embed that in the in uh, ID badges. Makes it easy for people to clip on and whatever. And I don't want to go into a huge amount of, of detail because, of course, this is a security issue. Mm-hmm. Um, part of the work has already been done, just as part of what we do to make our campuses. Um, operate and so uh, the the locks and the doors have uh, have been uh, upgraded already. This would be all of the software and hardware that's the technical part uh, for us to do uh, for our sites. Um, I don't think it's going to be a hundred thousand. Um, I overestimated on purpose. Um, I think it's going to be significantly less than that. But I wanted to leave a little wiggle room. So I'm asking for your approval of not to exceed a hundred thousand dollars. Uh, for our safety of our, our campuses. Do I have a motion? <coughs> I make a motion to approve the security features for the site and district offices and for it not to exceed $100,000. I'll second that motion. All those in favor, I'm Melinda Sebrasky. I, Charlene Diaz. I, Fred Rushton. I, Barbara Zerzicki. I, Sheila Burnett. <coughs> Item 8.8, renewal of medical pharmacy insurance with Kairos, right? Kairos. Mm -hmm. For school or fiscal year of 2025. Uh, Madam President and board members, (coughs) uh, we're not ready to bring to you yet the uh, recommendations for dental and vision and uh, life insurance. Uh, but we'd like to get started with this one. Uh, the committee, uh, the meet and confer committee, uh, had a presentation from uh, our representative from Kairos uh, last month. 
and uh, and then uh, she brought me the these prices uh, after it, the the prices weren't determined yet last month, but the committee was very much in favor of let's not start over uh, because anytime we start with a new insurance company, mm -hmm. uh, you start with <coughs> excuse me with their best guess uh, of what what kind of expenses they're going to have for our district, and um, uh, and. Frequently, they will give you really good rates for the first year, and then after a year of data, uh, those rates change. Um, <clears throat> we've been with Kairos now uh, for uh, four year, uh, three years, and next year would be our fourth year. Um, and so they, we have a history with them already. Uh, our, our loss ratio was 74%, and so um, insurance always goes up. Um, but that loss ratio brings us in at a 4% increase as opposed to the 7% increase that I had intend, uh, in, uh, had estimated. And in fact, 7% increase uh, is what's happening for the rest of, uh, for the rest of the Kairos uh, clients, um, <coughs> most of the rest of them. Um, we've done really well this year. So um, you can see that uh, what we pay, <coughs> excuse me, Historically, what we've paid as a district uh, is the amount under copay, and uh, and then employees can buy up to the core program or to the HD uh, HP fifteen hundred program uh, on their own, um, and so uh, and historically we have paid uh, for the employee only, mm -hmm. uh, and the and employees can also buy up for family and and those kinds of things. So. Um, uh, I'm recommending that uh, that you authorize us to renew our contract with Kairos for medical and pharmacy uh, for next year, and that the district pay uh, the copay uh, rate <coughs> for uh, excuse me, pay the co -ra copay rate for employees. Any questions? Hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I guess I have a question <laughs> coming from the medical background here I'm looking so right now we're estimating that three employees will pick the employee and children plan of the copay co plan is that what that means that's yeah that's who's uh, that's how many are enrolled right, right now, right now. <clears throat> and we always um, we are anticipating your next question um, we always have the request in the conversation and meet and confer about the district picking up some of the family insurance. And, and first of all, because it's expensive, but the other part is, um, you know, folks can go down the road and work in Needles uh, or anywhere in, Cal well, no, we found out it's not true everywhere in California, but in Needles, uh, our employees could go down and get a job in Needles and they pay 100% uh, for the employee and families. Um, <clears throat> But they're also they're also funded at three times the rate for mm -hmm. per student for budget. Mm -hmm. um, <coughs> we could say we could ask Kairos to give us rates um, uh, that bring down those rates for the employee and a spouse or employee and children. Um, but for every dollar that they bring it down for the for the other family members would raise our rate for the employee. And um, <clears throat> so that's not th to say that you couldn't say to me, okay, let's, let's invest 7% instead of 4% and, uh, and, and balance that out. Uh, in which case I would go back to them and say, okay, let's, you know, <coughs> let's negotiate these prices again. Um, but I'm not sure that it would bring down those family rates to a level that most, most um, employees can can pay for mm -hmm. they're high they're high um, family rates on on the open market <laughs> are much better yeah. than uh, than this mm -hmm. by the way uh, in the legislature <coughs> there is a bill in the legislature uh, uh, for a study to be done about a statewide insurance program for educators Oh, good. Um, and I, I don't know where it is in the process. I don't know if it got out of committee or not, but 
I was encouraged to see that as a, you know, as a consideration that the legislature was making, because if we could put all the educators in the state in one plan, it would good, the rates would rates. come way down, yeah. way down. So, uh, the, you know, that was that was an encouraging uh, bill. So it'd be sort of like a <coughs> Medicare for teachers. Yes, mm -hmm. kind of like Medicare for teachers. Yes, it would be. <coughs> Excuse me. Do I have a motion to approve? <coughs> you started this. I'm sorry. <laughs> <coughs> I'll make a motion that we approve um, <coughs> the, renewal. Know, the medical pharmacy insurance with Kairos for the uh, <coughs> fiscal year 25. I'll second that motion. All those in favor, I'm Melinda Sabrowski. I, Charlene Diaz. I, Fred Rushton. I, Barb Zerzicki. I, Sheila Burnett. <coughs> Item 8.9, salary schedule recommendations for school or <coughs> fiscal year, uh, 2024-2025. Right. Yeah. yeah, it's always <coughs> confusing because the fiscal year number is always the second half of the year. Mm -hmm. yeah. <coughs> uh, Cass, if you would show the c classified one. <coughs> I'm sorry, the frog is not leaving. Mm -hmm, it's not going away. <laughs> Um, okay, so for the classified salary schedule, um, I am recommending a 50 cent raise on base. Uh, for the last few years, we've done a 30 cent raise on base, and then in the middle of the year, had to reconsider because of the <laughs> because of the minimum wage. So I'm trying to be a, I'm trying to be ahead of that this time, uh, so that we can start this from the beginning of the year. And um, <clears throat> and then on the right, you see that I've added several columns. We have a number of folks. Uh, who have who are on uh, essentially on uh, are they're salaried and in the in the business uh, software um, they've not been on a salary schedule and so we've had to calculate every year what kind of you know what their raise would be um, <clears throat> the other thing is that these are folks all of these folks are folks who who have to work whenever we need them to work and um, uh, so uh, I'm proposing, and, and in, the, in the salary system, in the um, software, um, because they don't fall on a salary schedule, haven't fallen on a salary schedule, you look at that and it says min max, minimum maximum, and it doesn't tell me anything about, uh, doesn't tell anybody anything about what their salaries are gonna be. So I'm recommending that all of those positions be salaried as opposed to hourly. Thank you. And oh, thanks. I've got my own. Um, <laughs> um, and uh, that we actually have a schedule for them. Um, uh, and these numbers are based on their current, uh, their current hourly and or salaried uh, uh, <coughs> amounts, uh, with the commensurate um, uh, raise uh, that is on the left hand side of the chart. Uh, item uh, line 17 is our uh, is for our current occupational therapist, and um, uh, I've put it here because uh, we're honoring uh, a long time agreement uh, salary uh, salary schedule for that individual, um, and uh, uh, and we will continue to honor that as long as that individual is here. Um, but I've also put another the the newly approved occupational therapist. Uh, on, a, on a different salary schedule um, uh, for future, you know, for anybody who comes in the, in the future. Um, <clears throat> you'll notice at the bottom um, that I've also noted that uh, at the sixth, uh, the sixth, the eleventh, and the sixteenth year, and I've added that third step, um, that we would, uh, we would pay an additional 30 cents an hour for longevity. This is part of our plan for retention of employees. Currently, uh, we're paying for uh, the, the, the 6th and the 11th, and uh, so I'm recommending that we add that uh, additional 30 cents uh, per hour for the people who've been here 16, uh, 15, more than 15 years, 16 or more. <coughs> Do we have a facilities director? Um, we don't. Ha we have not had that primarily because we hired uh, Mr. Scott as the pro as the uh, uh, project manager under ESSER three, uh, primarily for the Den project. But then when we took back our facilities 
all of our facilities and custodial and landscaping, we needed a boss. And uh, so he's fulfilled that role. So his salary for the past two years has been paid out of ESSER 3. And of course, ESSER 3 is going away. Uh, so uh, we're rolling this back into, this is one of the six positions that we are rolling back into our M&O budget uh, from uh, ESSER, uh, from grant funding uh, for next year. <coughs> what does the facilities director do? He supervises the uh, facilities workers, so our HVAC uh, person, our plumber, the plumber's helper, the uh, construction person, all of the custodians, um, <coughs> primarily the head custodians, but all of the custodians. Um, he is out on sites literally most of the day, every day, uh, finding things that need to be, you know, need to be replaced, repaired, whatever. <coughs> and making sure that the work that our internal people are doing um, meets code uh, uh, is, and is the quality of work that we want. Um, we are exceptionally fortunate to have in this position right now an individual who has 40 years of background in, in these kinds of things. And, um, and he regularly shares with me the, his findings. So I'll give you an example, uh, today he brought to me, uh, the gear that goes into um, <coughs> one of the rollers that moves the bleachers at Fox Creek. And, um, uh, and it had been, um, there were things on the floor, and there are three, three of these units that move those bleachers. So, you, but they all run on the same switch. So you turn them on, and if one of them gets hung up on something on the floor, it keeps turning and keeps trying to go forward while the others are actually going forward. Um, and so what happens is it sits there and spins and it chews up the gears. That's what happened to this. Uh, another example is uh, we're, doing, uh, we're doing more of the floor work at the middle school. And um, one of the rooms that they're doing right now had two layers of floor tile. So pulled the floor tile up and found under the floor tile uh, an electrical outlet in the floor mm -hmm. uh, that uh, originally hooked up to a stove or something. It happens to be in a, in a room that way back was, was probably the home ec, right? Home ec rooms. <laughs> and, um, uh, and so it had been covered with these two layers of tile. However, the, the electrical outlet that was in the floor was hot. Oh, Jesus. And because of cleaning and mopping and whatever, water had gotten in there. So here we have this outlet, this hot outlet in the floor with, a, with water getting to it, and it's all rusty, and it, I mean, it was horrible. Um, okay, there's nothing that says that anybody who was tearing up that tile and who was doing that floor would have done anything about that if he hadn't been there to say, nah, mm -mm, this is coming out, we're gonna, we're gonna you know, cut the power off, find out where it is, cut it off, take those things out, fill the hole. Um, it, those are just some examples of uh, it, literally every day um, uh, that uh, he's finding because he knows to look for it. And um, uh, the rest of us don't, you know, we just walk around it or walk past it or whatever. Um, so uh, uh, yeah, uh, it's, it's part of the reason that our facilities are finally coming back to what they should be. And, um, and, and because of a lot of his, uh, uh, what he sees has also, has also resulted in us applying to SFB for funding to replace things. And um, <coughs> they've now agreed, uh, for instance, to replace the chiller at, I'm sorry, it's not a chiller. I was corrected. It is a cooling tower mm -hmm. at Desert Valley. Um, and his recommendation had been, that thing is so old and the pipes are so full of rust and, 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 here are all these issues. Let's not replace it. Uh, let's do away with it and let's put individual cooling units for the rooms in that building. So that if one cooling unit goes down, it's not the whole building that doesn't have cooling. Uh, I wouldn't have known to do that. 
uh, or to suggest that. And um, but his expertise led to that discussion, and uh, the expert that SFB sent in to evaluate uh, ended up recommending exactly what Mark recommended. So. Um, a whole lot of supervision and a whole lot of uh, um, quality control. Uh, what type <coughs> of, does he ha hold any type of licenses? Yes. As far as contractor H. Yes, and multiple. He holds also multiple inspector licenses. So does he hold a general contractor's <coughs> license? Yes. And uh, and we we could not begin to compete for for salary with the open market with the private in, private industry out there. I mean, he, you know, out he's he is interested and likes this job because it's Monday to Friday for the most part, and he doesn't have to go stay someplace for two months or three months to go you know build big buildings or do whatever it was that he used to do. Um, uh, you know, he likes having a having re pretty regular hours. Life. And, <laughs> yeah, and having a life. <laughs> so yeah, he could easily he could easily make double these salaries in the in the private sector, if not more. I have a quick question. Mm -hmm. um, they have not announced if there's going to be a 2025 salary minimum wage increase yet. I do not think. Um, but right now we're at. 1435 for minimum wage mm -hmm. so if they were to increase that by a dollar which is what I've heard they're talking about um, are we gonna have to revisit then this we later? would revisit yes we would um, and I would have recommended I, it, my first thought didn't even have to do with that minimum wage my my first thought was um, we need to be as Melinda says we need to be competitive and whatever uh, I'm not sure that we're competitive on the busing line as it is but the problem is right now there aren't people out there anyway, yeah. um, uh, so you know. But yeah, we would have to revisit it if that's if that's the case. <coughs> um, so that's that one. Um, would you please put up the teacher one? <coughs> Okay. <clears throat> During the current year, the heading for uh, this salary schedule or the similar, the corresponding salary schedule, said teachers, SLPAs, librarians, counselors, um, had had that whole list of people. Um, <clears throat> I've now pared it down to the teachers and SLPAs, um, and including the librarians because uh, they are teachers, and we can still uh, we can still put them in 16112. Um, so uh, I'm recommending a $500 raise here um, on base, and um, we would continue uh, at this point continue to pay the additional 1500 from classroom site fund. Um, <coughs> I, um, the classroom site fund committee and I are talking about a variety of things for next year relative to that plan, uh, and I have something relative to this that I want to discuss with them. So I left it like it is because, of course, it's the plan that comes to you and gets approved by the board. Uh, so I can't unilaterally make any changes in that. Um, and then uh, I also added to the explanation at the bottom uh, the longevity, uh, the longevity steps and added um, that third longevity step uh, this year uh, here as well as on that on the classified so for instance somebody who has uh, i'll just use as an example somebody who's in column a and is at going to be at step 11 uh, for next year <coughs> would have fifteen hundred dollars more from classroom site fund and would have an additional thousand dollars for having been here ten years. Questions? Yeah, I'm. Mm -hmm. um, I'm looking at this, and how can we find money to pay these teachers what they deserve? <laughs> Is there? I mean, I know it's a loaded question. But I mean, I just figured out somebody with a PhD with 11 years experience, we're, we're, we're talking that's, not very much. Not that's that, in the state average that we saw tonight. Yeah, mm -hmm. I mean, is there, 
Is there <coughs> some way we can have a committee formed or something to figure out how we can maybe somehow take money from Well, that's why I have meet and confer is to talk with them. And, and um, uh, if you, uh, I don't know. And I'm sure that doesn't include, though, their benefits and everything? or does No, that, this okay, is just so this salary. This is just base salary. So uh, benefits, um, uh, the uh, insurance that you just approved uh, will be about $14,000 a year for next year. And the benefits that the district pays uh, are 22%. Okay, so... Um, <clears throat> so if you calculate that out, you know, and those are those benefits essentially are non-taxable um, income right. because we pay them, and the insurance is a non-taxable income uh, because we pay that. And I'm not disagreeing with you, Sheila. I but would no, love I to know. do it. The thing is that we can <clears throat> I can afford to do this and present this to you now, even though the legislature has not take an action on what they're going to, you know, what, what our, our budget's going to be. I can do this and understanding that our budget that the legislature will give to us may be less than what they gave us this year because <clears throat> of our drop in enrollment. Um, <clears throat> I can do this and, and, and uh, recommend this because of that 2.5 million that I've been holding mm -hmm. in case of AEL which means that it's a one-time thing you know if we use it this time then then i i don't know that i could guarantee that we could sustain it that's problem. okay you so <clears throat> that, and we have to think about that too um if we can up the facilities um, manager by a thousand dollars it seems to me that we should be able to up the sal the base salary for teachers by a thousand dollars keep in mind that his contract and I'm not arguing with you because I would love to do that okay um, keep in mind that he works 12 months <coughs> 2080 hours compared to 1488 we all know teachers work more than 1488 hours I, was say. I get I, I totally get that okay um, uh, totally understand that I'm just trying to share facts with you so that so that you're aware of that uh, Cass do you are, are you logged into uh, board docs on your own so we can pull up um, my memo to them or are you logged on just as general <sighs> yeah would you please because I want to show I want to show them those other numbers <clears throat> so that I'm not just reading them to you. I have them in front of me, but I don't want to just, I want you to be able to see them. While she's doing that, <clears throat> um, I will also share with you some information relative to the third salary schedule that I want to show you, where I've actually built a schedule that includes, uh, that puts the counselors. We already last year did a, a schedule for the, uh, the coaches, the instructional coaches, uh, but puts the counselors and the other therapists. Sorry, I had to think about it. <clears throat> in, in other words, all the folks that are now removed from eligibility for, uh, uh, for the classroom site fund. So um, last year we paid over $6,000 uh, to the people who qualified for classroom site fund. On top of the $1,500, another uh, $6,000 um, from classroom site fund. <clears throat> The amount this year will be similar, uh, uh, so that's another, you know, so on top of this salary schedule and whatever, there, there's that amount of money. Next year, let's say it would be equal, 
that that total will be divided among fewer people because of the people that we pull out of eligibility for classroom site funds. So that might go to $7,000 on, on top of the, you know, the salary schedule, okay? Um, in, that, in that new salary schedule for those people that I pulled out, um, I did as much as I thought I could to increase those columns so that it made up for part of what those folks are losing by not qualifying for, for um, classroom site fund. So the columns for the counselors and the therapists move them up $5,000, move their salary up 5000 And the column for uh, instructional coaches moves them up thirty seven fifty to help make up. It doesn't totally make up because we don't know from year to year how much that's going to be. Um, but, um, uh, you know, I wanted to, uh, because otherwise we would lose these people. We would lose the people we have. Mm -hmm. We need to figure out ways to, to retain. And those are, the, so now that is money that is coming out of M&O, okay, to make up those differences, that's money coming out of M&O um, uh, that has been paid out of um, classroom site fund. Uh, yes. And would you get it big to show just this part, please? Just, <coughs> just looking at figuring a, a, an hourly wage. If you take a beginning teacher, a first-year teacher, with the salary we've got right now, their, be, their hourly rate wage is right around $26 an hour. You take the top one of the PhD with 11 years, their salary is $36 an hour. Yet we're paying our maintenance guy forty-six dollars an hour, our facilities manager. There's something wrong with that picture when our teachers can't even come close to making what our facilities manager is making. And you're paying me fifty dollars an hour. So, yeah. <coughs> uh, and I'm and I am cognizant of that. I am very cognizant of that. So so don't I have another question though too. You, you said that the benefits well, that they're getting matter. on we're top of their, their salary, salary is divided. about fourteen thousand. I'm sorry, Sheila. That's okay. You're, you're saying that the benefits are about $14,000 per teacher? For the medical and pharmacy insurance. For, for any so full-time employee. Do they, they automatically get it? Do they opt? Can they opt out? They can. Some get it, some don't. Well, some opt out because maybe their spouse has better insurance. Or, like me, they're on Medicare and don't, you know, don't need it. Uh, but that doesn't mean that, that, that they opt out of the other benefits. So, you know, like retirement and those things, um, uh, we're still paying for folks. So, But that's not take-home <coughs> pay, Sheila. That's not take-home pay. Take pay. It is not take-home pay. It so, is. Right, right. Right. It's well, not take-home pay. I was just figuring pay. if we added that on to the 1488 hours, I was just trying to figure out how much that would be, and that's like $9 an hour is what it looks like if they take all the benefits. If they get all the well, okay, so you do the 22 percent. Okay, so calculate. So what I have cash showing you here is uh, is uh, the breakdown of this. So to the raises for teachers, so the people on that teacher salary schedule that you were just looking at, okay, um, uh, a five hundred dollar on on a five hundred dollar raise on base is $341,000. The parapros who are classified, um, <coughs> the raise, would, you know, the, the essentially <coughs> 80 cent raise because 50 cents on base and 30 cents for step um, <coughs> would be, um, uh, be 29,000. Special education, which looks big, but I have notes down below if you, if you read my memo, uh, because I included in this uh, two positions that we did not fill this year and we've contracted out. Um, but I have to build them in because we would prefer to have in-house people doing these people, these things. Um, that increase that I told you about for, uh, actually that's low and I didn't go back and fix it. Uh, the increase for coaches and counselors is really more than that 10,000 that I have listed there. Uh, site support, support personnel is uh, our office people at all of our sites. Business office, you know who those people are. 
Uh, the total increase for facilities other than the facilities manager is uh, 87,000. Transportation, administration, and then those longevity, uh, any of the longevity payments, and this would be for both classified and certified. Um, this year we're paying <coughs> about $75,000 in longevity, which is good. I'm really glad we're doing that. That's a great thing, and I'm really happy to be able to say that we would be spending 100000 So we're talking about, uh, for salaries alone, 857000 for increases on the, on the proposed uh, schedules I've given you. Um, I calculated the benefits a bit low because it doesn't, it doesn't always, it doesn't always equal 22 percent. Um, so that would be 171,000, which is 20 percent of the 857,000. Um, medical insurance is going to cost us 110,000 additional. This is not what it's costing us, folks. These are additional dollars. Okay, so like the 340,000 would be the raises only. Okay. The 171,000 for benefits is the increase in, in benefits, not the total cost of benefits. We pay, we pay about $11 million in salaries right now. How many, <coughs> for that 341,000, how many teachers is that for? It's, for? it's for all of the current teachers minus, minus three because of drop in enrollment, we need to cut three positions, mm -hmm. plus five that we're absorbing from ESSER three. Okay. And those are the five EL positions, and so those folks tend to be, have higher salaries because they are more experienced teachers. <coughs> so a net, a net increase of teachers of, of two. Because at 341000 you said we're giving a $500 raise. That's base. And so everybody, everybody moves up a step. Yeah. So, that's, so they essentially, any current person is getting a $1,000 raise because they're getting the 500 on base and, a, and another 500 on step. <coughs> so when you say, how are we paying $1,000 to our facilities manager, we're paying a thousand dollars to our teachers too. So I'm having a problem here because that you're saying we're increasing the each teacher's pay by a thousand, and it's going to cost us three hundred forty-one thousand. So we have mm -hmm. three hundred forty-one teachers in the district. No, but we have some people who are. Uh, we have some people who are. Uh, well, we have those. We have those positions that we're having to. We're having to pay. So that's part of it. So we're having a, the two teachers that we are, the net of two teachers that we are hiring from, uh, uh, from ESSER, um, uh, that's about $100,000 of oh, okay. that. So you're, you're okay. Because so that's, that's a not, total salary. Yeah. That's not plus just an increase, plus, that's a total plus the salary. The teachers that are bringing in. Yeah, them. great point, Barb. Thank you, for, thank you for having me clarify that. Yeah. Okay? Yeah, because I'm looking, going, I know we only have 300. <coughs> No, in the district. no, we don't. And the but uh, making sense. yeah, no. So uh, uh, we're increasing uh, the staff at, at Desert Valley by one, mm -hmm. okay, because of enrollment. We're decreasing the staff at the middle school by four mm -hmm. because of drop in enrollment at those grade levels. <coughs> so that's a net law, a net drop of three. Mm -hmm. We're bringing back five. Okay. Two so that's two teachers. So in this 340,000 is the total salary for those two people. For those two teachers. Yeah. Okay. Plus the raises for everybody else. Yeah. Thank you for asking me to clarify that. It's kind of like looking at the special ed one. You know, where <coughs> the 193,000 when w when we have about 22 sped teachers and you go, "Wait a minute, how can 22 SPED teachers get that when it's only 341000 above. The thing is that 193000 includes a full salary for uh, a school psychologist and a full year, uh, a, a three-fourths of a salary for uh, the new OT position because we're really only paying a fourth of a year for, the, for that person right now. So, you know, so the numbers look a little skewed because of what, what's involved. 
Can you show us <coughs> the, the new the new salary schedules you made up for the specialists? Then? Sure. Would you do that? <coughs> so you notice that total was a, a million, almost a million too. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, <coughs> um, uh, so to partly make up, and <coughs> I mean, if you you know if you want me to, I can totally I, I can go closer. The thing is, we don't know from year to year. So there have been years when the classroom site fund has really only been about five thousand yeah. dollars, and uh, so that's kind of why I picked that number, <laughs> um, uh, because we you know that's never guaranteed. That's based on sales tax, state, state sales tax. And it's a certain amount. Uh, it's about 400, and I think it's 485 dollars per student um, this year. And um, and that so because of because of what happens with sales tax, that goes up and down. Plus our enrollment is down. <coughs> so um, uh, so uh, the salaries the columns O and P are new, brand new. And I started those numbers with what, based on what we are currently paying people in those positions. I was not going to set up a salary schedule that was lower, you know, than their than what they're making now, right? right. Plus the five thousand. So uh, that's the basis for those two columns, and then the column K for the coaches who have qualified for classroom site fund in the past. Um, I increased uh, by uh, 3,500, 30, 3,750. <coughs> for columns L, M, and N, I just moved them up one step, just like we did for teachers. So the certified des district <coughs> director, who do we have one of those? We have two. They're sitting right there, Jen and, okay. and Kate. Who essentially in our district function as assistant superintendents? I mean, it's, you know, that's really the role that they play. <coughs> so we are paying the coaches a higher hourly rate than we are paying our beginning teachers. A beginning coach gets a higher hourly rate than our beginning teachers do. They tend to have they have higher degrees, and they have much more experience as a teacher. They don't come onto this schedule. Let's say that they've been teaching five years. Mm -hmm. They don't start on step six on this schedule. They start on step one. Mm -hmm. And so uh, in some cases, it means they're taking a loss to come into the position. OK. Um, and ask Jen about that, because <coughs> she, took, she took a huge salary cut to, be, to go from being a kindergarten teacher to being an assistant principal. We've tried to rectify that a little bit for you know for all of our folks, but that shouldn't that shouldn't happen. And the other thing is that these people have uh, the coaches have higher education and years of experience as teachers. Most of them have administrative degrees as well, don't they? Some of them do. Yeah, I, I I'm <coughs> going to make a motion on this, and whether it dies for a second, I don't know. I move that we. Um, put forward the recommendations for the classified and the certified specialists, that we accept those recommendations, but we send back the certified teachers and ask for $1,000 on the base instead of 500. I second it. All those in favor, I'm Melinda Sebrowski. I Barb Zarzicki. I Sheila Burnett. Well, I certainly would like to see the teachers get more, but I have to believe that Dr. Stewart is doing the best that she can. So at this point, I'm going to say no for me. I'm worried about the sustainability. Mm -hmm. That's, I that's, do too. that's mm -hmm. my mm -hmm. concern. I, I don't know that I want to vote on this unless I have the figures in front of me that says, yes, we can sustain this. If I withdraw my motion, should we table it? I would rather table it than, okay. than vote on it. Then yeah. I, will, I will withdraw my motion. Can Barbara, will you withdraw your second? Yes, I'll withdraw a second. 
Then I move we table the salary recommendations for school fiscal year 25. That gives Dr. Stewart time to go and mm -hmm. it does, and that's yeah. that's a perfect sharpen her pencil. And <laughs> <laughs> that's a perfect solution to that. Thank you, Charlene. Motion. And I appreciate that. I There's know. a motion. That's a, the, so we don't need a motion. It's tabled, motion. and she'll bring it back to us. Okay. She knows she knows what the the motion was, and she'll fix it somehow. Eight. I'll bring you new data. Well, you got or, or that's or all right. I mean, <laughs> she may come back and say, you know what, asking. we can't sure. do it. That's Absolutely. Absolutely. But it's got to be something that's sustainable. I don't want to mm -hmm. dig a hole. I mean, I'd love to pay every teacher $100,000. That would be wonderful. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But, you yeah. know. But, okay. 8.10 8 continuation of the partnership with <clears throat> instructional empowerment year two. Is uh, this one going to be paid under a grant also, or is does this now come out of our pocket? Basically, okay. she says three hundred thousand dollars will be paid out of a grant. At least three hundred thousand. Okay. Uh, I'm appealing to uh, the state department for mm -hmm. some funding, um, but I didn't want to. I didn't want to <coughs> jinx it mm -hmm. right? by giving you an amount. Okay. Um, <clears throat> and um, so you had in front of you, or you had available to you uh, the actual um, uh, information from mm -hmm. them mm -hmm. and, uh, and what all is entailed in that. Um, <clears throat> and um, uh, Jen has assured me of 300000 from grants. Mm -hmm. There's always a possibility of a few more pennies <laughs> from those grants because she runs a real tight ship. Um, but um, like me, she's conservative in her promises, and um, so <coughs> uh, so we're looking at um, a commitment from. Um, <coughs> and right now, of course, it would be a one-year commitment because once again, this would be funded from that 2.3, uh, 2.5 million that I have in uh, kind of in reserves. Well, that would take half of. That two point five mm -hmm. million you've got mm -hmm. in reserve, and the salary raises would take the other half. Well, mm -hmm. most of the other half, and leave us a li leave us a little wiggle room for, uh, for instance, if teachers we hire, um, uh, because I estimate what what a salary is going to be for those vacant positions that you saw in there on the board, mm -hmm. um, and <clears throat> so if we hire somebody who's a little more expensive than that, you know, I've got to have some wiggle room. I have to have. It's not petty cash, but I have to have some contingency money to play with f with that. When are these guys going to be back in town? Uh, next week, Monday. You you met Kevin because he was here uh, and presented information to you. Um, uh, is the whole team going to be here next week? Yeah. They're here about every other week. Weekly? They're here weekly. So, I mean, essentially they're embedded in our schools. And I would encourage you when they're here to come see what they do. Um, you know, that would be, if that would help you to table this one to go see what they do shadow them for a couple of hours um, <coughs> I'd like to table this one until next month too so that we can so we can get it. yeah we can do a little more research on it because that cost is just too so much. how do the rest of you feel I hear Barbara I mean I'm fine with tabling it is it gonna hurt anything to table it well I was gonna ask Jen are we are we under the gun for a uh, signature on this we're not are we yeah. Um, the other thing that I would say to you is, having paid for year one, <coughs> excuse me, with grants, one way of looking at this is our 1.2 million is 600,000 for this current year and 600,000 yeah. for next year out of our budget, which certainly, you know, and, and that's not playing games with it. It's, it's talking about what our district's commitment is to improving instruction and improving student success. Mm -hmm. And so when you think about this 1.2 million that I've had sitting there uh, for 
other reasons, but now we, we need to address it. When you think about it that way, it's 600,000 for the current year and it's 600,000 for next year. Um, <clears throat> and um, uh, from my perspective, it's, it's us as a district putting our money where our mouth is. I, oh, I, I, I understand that, Carol. The, the thing I have <coughs> a hard time is, I, that's why I wanna come and sure. shadow them and see, Absolutely. because I have a hard time understanding why our coaches couldn't be doing some of the stuff they're doing because they didn't know some of it, and they're learning too. But they knew a good bit of it, okay, but, now but they didn't know the it all. Is there some way we can cut back so it's not quite so much, you know, that okay. the, the there coaches are could six, take on more? There are six elements to this training, okay? Six, is that right? Up to 600, okay. Our teachers have been trained in one and two. The plan for next year is three and four. No, just three. Three and four, three, three and four, depending on where the site is. Okay, the reason that originally it was set up as a three-year thing is that is that our teachers get a third of the training the first year and implement it, get good at it, get the next set of training the second year, practice it, implement it, get good at it, and then add the last two elements the following year. Um, and and uh, so that's why it's a three-year thing. Uh, so. But well, I really, I encourage you to go shadow. So you suggested that we table this. I'm okay with that. Um, is, is anybody else? I would love to go and shadow <coughs> this. In fact, yeah. with some of the data that you showed us earlier, we can pretty much pick the classrooms or the, at least the subject area and the grade level that is, is doing well. Well, I would want you so, to, I would want you to yeah. uh, visit in classrooms where the teachers have embraced this, okay, mm -hmm. who are farther in the change process. So you can see what is possible mm -hmm. after one year, okay. Mm -hmm. I would encourage you to go, uh, uh, and I, this, would, this probably means an all-day commitment for you, but to go be part of or observe the stand-up meeting, the daily stand-up meeting, where the coach and the principal and the assistant principal and the IE coach process what has happened that day and where they are in their goals because they set 45 day goals and then they break that down into 15 day sprints if you will okay and and when they go in classrooms and i will tell you that the coaches and the principal and the assistant principal ask mary back there are in classrooms daily mm -hmm. daily now if you're really observing, you can't be in 30 classrooms every day and observe what's going on in 30. But over the course of the four day week, you're in every single one of those classrooms seeing, seeing what's going on. So I, I would encourage you, and I know this is tough, but to go spend the entire day at one of the sites um, we can do um, that. where yeah. they're doing Can yes. you tell us when, what days we could do that? Like I could do a Wednesday, that <coughs> would be an issue. Mary, sure. Wednesday's I work? A, I can do a Monday. Yeah, I can PLC day is the planning and the planning day for them and where they're looking at the standards and planning their lessons for two weeks from now. Not next week, mm -hmm. two weeks from now, okay? So that's a good one, Thursdays are good. And, and many of our schools also do it on Tuesday, also do PL, an extra PLC on Tuesdays. We don't have a formal one, but the teams might meet on their practice. Yeah, yeah. If, if we and, I would advise, and I would recommend either Desert Valley or the middle school. Uh, Oh, okay. Jen, could you captain. get us? Could you get me a schedule? Yeah. So yeah, that I, so we know, I can pick. Jason. And then my other question is: there anything that we can get from IE that would <coughs> give us like other school systems data that would show their absolutely their improvement, so we can have more yeah. of a yeah. My and Kevin, person. Kevin shared some of that when he was here, but I know it was it was totally new stuff for you mm -hmm. all, and so. Uh, you know, it wouldn't, wouldn't have made a whole lot of sense at the time, but I'm sure that Kevin can get us what we need. Yeah, that uh, what would be you need. very helpful. Is Absolutely. He, Kevin know. might want to come in and talk to us. Soon. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. okay. And he's, he's, he's here almost every week, isn't he, Kevin? Yeah, Kevin's here almost every week because he supervises the rest of them and he also coaches himself. So, um, uh, so when you go, uh, it, it would be perfect to um, uh, be his shadow. 
would we be able to, I don't know if it has to be formal or off the record or how <coughs> we can do that. Is there a way for us to like, just meet with him as a board one-on-one? -on -one we could or? set that up. We, then maybe we that would just announce easier. it as a, we would just announce it as a workshop. We would just need to yeah. do that you know 24 hours in advance but there's no there's no problem of doing what that do you guys think about that that way we have time set aside <coughs> if jen will get us a schedule and we will put that on for a future yeah, time i really want to we yeah. commit there. to this but i want to make sure that i can yeah. right have exactly. a schedule. We'll, we'll put that on as absolutely a future topic i think, I we're think. All on board with that. excellent and and i <coughs> i absolutely embrace the idea that you're doing that i i First of all, I think you have a, a responsibility to do that kind of thing, but I also think that um, uh, you will be amazed at some of the things that are I, I'm hoping with kids and with teachers and with coaches. Okay, so we've, we've tabled that. 8.11, convenient. Did, did you vote to table? We need to vote to table. Do we? Yes. Do you we have to make vote. a motion? Yes. Okay. I'll make a motion that we table 8.10. Continuation of the partnership with industrial instructional empowerment year two. I don't two. think we made a, a, and why a didn't motion you? for the other one too. So why don't you add that eight point nine also? Oh, can we do it all in one? Sure, sure. sure. Table them both in one. Okay, and then also table eight point nine salary schedule recommendation for fiscal year twenty five for teachers. For, for teachers. teachers. Oh yeah, for teachers. For certain. I second that motion. All those in favor? I, Melinda Sabraski. I, Charlene Diaz. I, Fred Rushton. I, Barbara Zarzicki. I, Sheila Barnett. But we didn't vote on the non-teacher one. And you probably should do that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I thought you did. Did they vote on the oh, non-teacher? Mm -hmm. No, I would. I think we just take. We just. Oh, you yeah, withdrew it. Okay. It. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. I move that we accept. Let me go back here and make sure that I get this right. The salary schedule recommendations for the classified combined. Mm -hmm. And the certified specialist. Do I have a second? I'll second that motion. All those in favor? I, Melinda Sabraski. I, Charlene Diaz. I, Fred Rushton. I, Barbara Zarzicki. I, Sheila Burnett. Okay, I think we've Ooh. caught up with Ooh. ourselves. Thank you. <laughs> 8.11, convenient executive session pursuant to ARS 38431.03 A1, discussion or consideration of employment, assignment, appointment, promotion, demotion, dismissal, salaries, disciplining, and or resi resignation of a public officer, appointee, or employee of a public body, except that, with the exception of salary discussions, an officer, appointee, or employee may demand that the discussion or consideration occur in a public meeting. And I, obviously it was not demanded that we do it in public. Well, I could say to you that, well, I didn't in advance. I mean, this has to do with my goals. It's gonna be a very short, okay. unless you all have other things to discuss. I, it, my report to you is gonna be very brief. So I could say I could do it in public. If it'll save some time and you're okay with it. Sure. I'm okay with it. Can we do that legally? Yes. Okay. Let's go. <laughs> Even though okay. yes, you can you can decide so, not to do an executive session. Okay. Do I have to vote on we that? We can't. Yeah, we probably do. <laughs> no, I don't think so. I think you can just. I mean, since I've said that I would do it publicly. Oh. I don't okay. think okay. you have to vote yeah. on it. All right. All right. Well, let's listen to what you have. Well, to say. Okay. Go. So yeah. the two goals that you all have for me uh, that that we've been working on are the strategic plan and the grading committee. Uh, strategic uh, planning committee met recently mm -hmm. um, and did quite a few things um, uh, I wasn't ready even to bring you a draft because as I looked through uh, the notes and the and the written part that cast pulled together from all of those four committees um, they had not written uh, two of the committees had not written smart goals mm -hmm. and so I need to work with them to write smart goals and <coughs> And the fifth committee, which was not part of that process that day, has to do with, in, um, with improved instruction and student achievement. Um, and that's not all pulled together yet from what's been going on at our school sites. So uh, I'll have, a, I'll have a, a draft plan for you at the April meeting, Perfect. Okay, okay, with all of that pulled together. The grading committee uh, has met and actually had a working session uh, recently, a, a four-hour working session. 
uh, and got through um, uh, not quite the same at the elementary and the and the upper grades, the two committees, the two subcommittees, uh, because they were going through all the standards um, and identifying what they want on the on the rep the new report cards, um, and uh, that's kind of exciting what they what they've worked on with that. Uh, and um, so they still need to meet They're, you know, they, they and the two committees are going to do their own meetings because of timing um, to uh, continue that to finish the things that they want identified on the report card. Um, Diana Verley is on that committee because she is the one who's going to coordinate all of these decisions with what we can and cannot do in synergy. And the good news is that she went to some training and found out that we can do everything we want to do in synergy. Um, and so, uh, uh, so we're moving along with that. Um, uh, the next meetings, uh, the next meeting together. Oops, I'm sorry. The next meeting together will involve how we want to roll that out to staff uh, when we get there, and how we want to roll it out to the public, to parents, particularly when we get there. So we're on track uh, with uh, with uh, both of those committee activities. So, okay, excellent. Thank you. Yes, that's a nice report. Okay, so we're going to move to 11.1, future topics. Do we have any future topics that you guys would like to talk about? Well, of the items that we've tabled. Yeah. Oh, of course. Yeah. 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 <laughs> there you go, Fred. Thank you, Fred. You're welcome. <laughs> For keeping us on track. Yes. <laughs> Anything else? Not right now. Okay. Then I guess we're on to upcoming board events our activities upcoming board events hmm. I looks like we have a, a registration for the summer conference from ASBA when we need to have that turned in by April 15 that's when it opens Oh, that's when it opens? Mm -hmm. The registration opens then, yeah. Okay. <coughs> Do we know what the date date is for that yet? During the during the regional policy oh, bridge training. Have you ever done this? One? Oh. Um, um no, I haven't. But that's usually the kind of thing that Cass will oh, do. Oh, Cassie does that one. Mm -hmm. Okay, I knew somebody did, usually does it. Yeah, because it's mm -hmm. about how to put, when we make changes, how to put them in the system, right? Mm -hmm. This um, uh, regional policy bridge training. Has ASBA? <laughs> no, but I think it's intended yeah. like for the, I think yeah, it's I intended, think it for intended for the ad admin mm -hmm. assistance. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Cassie, uh, do you know when the uh, when the uh, summer conferences look <coughs> like? Okay. Um, I, I'm sure days. I can I can look it up too. Oh, <laughs> have, they, have they yeah. arranged? Have they said anything about the spring meeting for Mojave County? No. Mm -hmm. Okay. I think maybe I'll work on that one. Um, Superintendent. Madam yes, sir. Uh, the answer to the question on the Summer Leadership Institute, June 6th through June 8th. 6th through 8th. Thank you. Thank yes, you. Little Thank America. You. It's June? Yeah, it's June 6th through 8th. Thanks, Lance. What's on down below here, Case? <coughs> oh, okay. Madam President, there's one item missing from that second page uh, on April 10th, if you're interested in attending. Uh, the uh, IT department is going to be hosting uh, an evening workshop for parent view training.
Yeah, that was that's coming that's coming about because of um, part of the action plan for the strategic planning committee. Okay. It would be interesting to see that. Yeah. Right. So um, for <coughs> uh, that one is parent resources. So that committee has a number of activities planned for the next year, um, but wanted to get a head start on uh, helping parents who need it with uh, how to use Parent View, which is uh, parents access oh, to that Synergy. Would be oh, interesting. Yeah. That would be That's interesting. Right. What, what time <coughs> is that? <coughs> what time? Seven p.m. Seven p.m. Or here? No, so it was it's here. at Coyote. Coyote. Oh, is it Coyote? Mm -hmm. In the gym. At Coyote. Yeah, I think it's in the cafeteria. Oh, yeah, you're right. The it's cafeteria. a cafeteria. It's yeah. Eighteen. <coughs> oh, April. From four to eight. April eighteen. Yeah, they're serving food. So it's April 18th. Yeah, it's on the calendar. Coyote Yeah, it's on the calendar. April 18th. Okay. In the library. Oh, it's in the library. Yeah. Okay. Four o'clock. Five. Five o'clock. In the library. No. With yeah. the lead pipe. <laughs> Sorry. What yes. time did you have? Five o'clock. Five. <laughs> uh, I'll make up a time and just go there. <laughs> I have five thirty on my it's a calendar. For, for the for the workshop. No, no. The tech workshop. I have five thirty. Five thirty. Yeah. Doors open at five. Yes. Oh, okay. So, uh, like lots so of you want a good seat? We'll be there at five. five. I've heard the reason. Before you can out with <laughs> the yeah. reason for five is for parents. Who, who don't have access to uh, technology at home to get, help them get signed up to even start. Yeah. And then at 530 starts the how to use, how to use okay. the parent view. All right. Okay. That would be fun. We'll see what, but that's on April 18th. 18th. Thursday night. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's a Thursday night. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. April 11. Okay. That sounds good. Anybody not be able to show up on April 11th? 11th. Oh, for our I next. I will be here, but I will be tired, but I will be here. <laughs> for our next board meeting. <laughs> okay. Next board meeting. Do you have any particular topics you would like in the workshop? Oh, I am sure we we'll can come up with something. <laughs> Let me know. Okay. Otherwise, I will punt. Okay. Usually, you send us something that spurs <laughs> me spurs me on. Uh, okay. Excuse oh, me. Oh yes, and it, for that workshop, Jen has to do a, a Title One meeting. Oh. Um, so that'll be part of that workshop. Gotcha. She's required okay. to do that part of, for the grant. Gotcha. Perfect. Gotcha. Do I have a motion to adjourn? I make a motion. We adjourn. I second that motion. All those in favor? I'm Melinda Sabrowski. I Charlene Diaz. I Fred Rushton. I Barbara Zerzicki. I Sheila Burnett. <coughs> we are adjourned. Thanks, y'all. I'm way past my butt. <laughs>